there's something called the corruptor and something called the corruptee. The corruptee is the one who receives a morsel of the value of the contract. Mm. The corruptor is the one who has the full share of the corrupt activity. This is The Hustler's Corner. What's up, squatters and hustlers out there? Nyajale, nyajale. Uh, my name is Penuel the Black Pen, and this is the virtual Mkuku with myself and Ikhrot Manlami, uh, a guy I admire very much, my mentor, and someone who's basically changed my life this year, Uti Sbu. Today we're having an amazing guest who is a father to me as well, and a brother to Sbu himself, the great bishop, Uchoshua Maponga. It is the first Monday of spring, which means we're now in African New Year month. We're looking forward to uh, celebrating a lot with a lot of you guys, uh, within Zaloyelanga, Mpumalanga, mm. uh, some of you guys at the Credo Mutua Village, mm. celebrating Africa, celebrating spring, celebrating a rebirth of our continent and the beauty that it is. And I think, in essence, some of you are probably starting to feel that the universe is changing and it's shifting. And I think this is the time, and we've got one of the greatest guests that's coming through today, Obabu Joshua Maponga. But before we let him speak, DJ Sbu. Boop, 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 boop. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, my brother. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Cheers. my brothers. Happy Thank you so year, much. Yeah. African brothers. Thank you so much. All of us. Happy New Year. Sebonga Africa. Happy New Year. Sebonga Africa. Sebongu tu vuge. Jobanje begu upsiga. Sebongu tu vuge. Uzos funza kuti sile. Uzos fundisa. No kuti slanga ne no baba. No mkulu. No putbe tabatala. Kuti bas kombi sintela. Bas kanyisele. Abantu betu sebege bak tindezelo. Iskate site. What is Kati Majas with Sensilum Seven so which is Vuse? E Africa Yonk is Vuse, especially Abantu Abansundu. Uguti Bakumbu would not see Abantu. Natis Nest Tunes is Nest Dima. So we just want to thank you for another new year that is here. I want to thank you for my brothers, my father that is here. And I'm looking forward to building a great Africa for all Africans and for the rest of the world to come back home. The cradle of humanity, Africa. Yabo. I see this as a, an iconic episode. We thank you. Open the ways, Magukanye, 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 Magvulege, Magukanye, Lapubek Bopege Kona Makumuge, Mawangamugo Onka Mafindo, Mawangamuga Inke Tang Zonke Mangamuge, Baraquena, Bara Lope, Abagwan Kosi, Abagwan Kumane, Makanye, Abagama Ponga, Abagam Lochwa, Abaga Chabalala, Nabobonka Baslale, Diga Kulugaz Incha. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, Year. New Year. Iconic episode. I'm Jeez. looking forward to this one. Wow. The great bishop, Joshua Maponga. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wow. One thousand tandas on Tandaze like a panel. Kwam Nandi, Nava was adding full in cons again. So you have to put a nomigel again. It's been some fun this I'm so excited. Jeez. Yo, Pen. Yes. I'm so excited. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long time coming. Jeez, it's been too long coming, man. And you know, normally when I sit with the, the great bishop, which was Maponga, Maponga J, um, I'm just there to suck wisdom. He's a walking library. He's a walking mythical figure. There are people that see him in the streets and they imagine that when they haven't seen him, he's gone up into the sky or he <laughs> disappears somewhere. Uh, I'm normally there just to suck wisdom. And even today, uh, I'm hoping to not speak as much because I know he is a legend in... in the spoken word from a religious perspective, today from an African spirituality perspective, and he's doing some work in politics. So I'm here to learn, uh, to obviously, we'll, we're gonna probe a few things that are trending in the news, but outside of that, I'm going to go to the news. 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 No, but they say a good, a good beard always shows the, the, the fertility of the land. You know? So when the ground is fertile, then you go to the land. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the dry lands. But I think it will be, it will be very nice. I mean, on many subjects that we can cover for today, uh, I, have, I have seven major uh, streams of information. Because when you're doing public speaking sometimes and in a space where we are decolonizing the, 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 the African mind, we needed to have thought through the process itself so that when we, when we begin to attack the system, we know exactly at which angle are we focusing on. So on the top side is the, is the politics and governance. 
which speaks basically of the legalities, the laws, the frameworks of managing the black mind and how the colonial system is actually sitting there. When you hear the young politicians, even old politicians, talking about the rule of law, our constitution, our this, our that, you know that it is a, it is a recited uh, information which is already, is already showing that your mind has been captured. To think that a colonialist method of governance is superior to your own indigenous method of governance. So that needs to be decolonized. So our opposition parties and our leading parties, they don't need to get into power to manage a colonial system, but to transform it. Because all the legal systems, government institutions, are bodies of restrictions for black people to break into the space of business. So there are all the legalities. You can't do this. You must get a book for this. You must get a regulation for this. You must get a certificate for this. If you look at it very carefully, and you end up finding out, like even the issue of these uh, illegal miners, who says they're illegal? Because a black man is holding gold is illegal. Mm. When an Anglo has been digging here for donkey years, they are legal miners. Why? Because the, the governance system allows only a few people to hold the gold. So even if you have gold underneath your house, you can't hold it. You can't. Because it's illegal. You must yes. have a certificate from the government. To, so the legality part, which for me becomes the very first, which is the governance and legality, needs to be decolonized. Mm. So that when a local person is holding their resources, they can't be illegal. Mm. Then the illegal multinational who is actually claiming that he has rights to your land and to hold your resources, which you can't hold yourself. And second on that will be the issue of education. Mm which is what I would, what might want us to focus on the first part of the show itself. I think it would be nice to start with education. Yeah. Yeah. Education, and what is it? So I would, I'll leave that, because that's what we're going to be discussing. Mm. And on the third part of that is the business and commerce. And, and what, what informs that? And there is banking also, right in the business space. Mm. Who is allowed to do business and who can't do business and what kind of business? What are the means of transactions? And, and where is the money being kept and how is it recycled? Can they, how do black people get finances and how do they pay back their loans? What are these sureties and who has the access to the land, which is the surety for the bank and the insurances? It's all this structure where you find that the business sits on when they are saying our economy is doing well. Yes. You hear them talking in an exciting way. Our economy. And you look at them very well and say, are you sure it is your economy? Which part of it is yours? Mm -hmm. You have all servants and slaves here. It's about employment to you as black people. Mm -hmm. To them it's about ownership. 100%. So it's your governance systems, then comes your, your, your education, then comes your business and, 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 and commerce. And thirdly on that, it will come agriculture. Agriculture, and what does it inform? Who supplies food for us? Mm. We need to decolonize even the food itself, what we drink and what we eat. Mm. Because what we, we, what, without knowing it, the next level, which is the health, speaks to that. Because what we eat results in how we are being treated. Yes. So, and lots of rules there again. Who plans what? Who does not plan what? Which health system is acceptable? Which medications are acceptable? Which ones are not acceptable? And um, acceptable according to who? Mm. I mean, the other day, talking about the Mkhlonya and I here, and say, you know, we have not done tests. Like, hell no. Testing what when all people have been drinking this for the past three, five thousand years? They've been testing it. They've been testing which it other, Which centuries. other tests do you want to test? Ugutu Mkhlonya and Yase Benza when Amakhutman are telling you that this is how we've been living for thousands According years. to whose standards? Yeah. According to whose standards? Then last but not least on that, then you have your entertainment and sporting. Even now, people are excited about sports, sports, sports. But you look at it, I mean, you look at Mlava Lava, the old game, which was mathematical. Mm. Two here, three there, four there. Roll them around in their calculating, in their adding, rather than just boys chasing a skin of a dead ox, <laughs> you know, which, which is a dead mind game. I'm sorry for, sorry for soccer lovers. I'm, I'm a pirate. <laughs> hey, me, I'm a Chelsea. I'm a Man United. Me, I'm a mm. Highlander. People buy Jeez. Highlanders. Yeah. 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 Highlanders. Yeah. Zimbabwe. People yeah. buying sure. uniforms and Shout jerseys. Just Highlanders and Zim. Yeah, sure. yeah. I'm a fan of the I'm a fan of the I'm a So you look at our entertainment and sports. And how much colonization has gone in there? Yeah. What we say sports right now, it's cricket, it's rugby, it's soccer, it's snooker, it's what? And you look at our African games. It's tennis. And, and, yeah. Mm. So what, what how, are how are they building us, I think, mm. is what is touching on. Yeah, I guess. I and, guess. and again, you find that a black man running a, an African company, he will take money to invest into white games. And what makes these games alive is simply because people are able to put money into it. The other day, mm. I noticed people were climbing trees. This is a sport. Can you believe? Mm. Climbing trees, literally, like, <laughs> riding bicycles. So can't we find our own indigenous games and make them commercial and also be able to put money into that? Then that speaks also to fashion mm. and, and clothing. And lastly, number last, that's my department, spirituality and religion. So when you're looking at the colonization, mm. there's a project itself on these seven pillars. 
Then you need to understand that many people now rush to me when I'm talking about the Jesus story. No, they want to come and toy toy around me. I said, hey, friend, leave me with religion. There are six other departments there that equally need your mind. So all of us, professionally in our various spheres of skills, mm. we need to go back into those uh, spheres and influence the transformation and the decolonization that we need. So that not one man fighting only from the religious corner. But instead, the commercial guys must come forward, creating new banks, new insurance mm. companies. You know, the education guys must come in, creating new curriculums. The innovations and agricultural guys must be coming with indigenous plants and foods and diets and drinks and what. And, 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 and so that the revolution burns the whole bush. Mm. For me, that becomes an, an all-inclusive. Mm. So, all so don't come on these platforms and complain about what Spoo is doing and what Panuel is not doing, mm. what Maponga is not doing. People always have recommendations. You must be doing this. You yes. must be doing this. I said, hell no. I don't work for you. Find your space in the struggle. Yes. Take your skills there. Start the transformation. Even in small little things, let the revolution be for all of us. Mm. Jeez. Education, please keep going. Tina Sizofunda. Education. Education. Education, formal and informal. Formal again, according to who? Informal, according to who? This is funny. Because what you call informal education is actually the formal education. Because the informal education prepares you to work. Actually, it is the education that is not written on paper. Mm. It is what you do as you learn. Mm. And you learn as you do. Whereas the formal one is where you must do the bookish knowledge system first in a university. And in conclusion, then you must write a CV. Mm. Then you, you show us what you have studied. But you can't do it. Then you say you're educated. <laughs> so the African education is called informal. Yeah, of course. The but, one that actually is practical. But informal education yeah. creates some of the most sophisticated things that you can ever imagine, mm. which CN, CNC machines would struggle to make. Mm. And we call that informal education. But when you look, let me just look maybe squarely well into what they call the formal education structure. And maybe sp speak of its advantage first mm. and its disadvantage next. The advantage of the formal education, it standardizes knowledge systems across the globe so that you are able to know what everybody else knows around the world there. Mm. Beautiful. It's a waste of time in that the greater percentage of what you're studying from primary school to university is totally junk in the bag. You will not even remember what you studied. That's a fact. That's why parents struggle to help their children with homework. Yeah. Because it's not practical. You learned it, but you know. Yeah. 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 No, we used to spot my exam papers and see which one is coming. And then if you strike the one that is coming, share my aim. Sure. So how what what gaja is that? Hey, to study paper wrong, you know. Sure. So kids memorize answers. And because you can regurgitate those answers, you are called educated. Sometimes if I forgot the best part of my exam. I've heard those stories. I've heard those stories. I've heard those stories. I'm hustling on campus, bro. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at our education system, maybe let me not waste time with arguments. Let me go exactly what I want to say then we can actually be able to, we can engage on this one. Yes, sir. I, I feel I want to give you, for this afternoon in the Hustlers Corner, I want to give you a template, a blueprint mm. of what I think education should be like, particularly yes. for the African child post 21st century. Our education must not be from learning to employment. Our education must be from problem to solution. Mm. Let me clarify that. What, I, what do I mean by that? It means that a student firstly, goes, goes into the community, mm. takes off their shoes, and they walk around the community. Mm. They identify the problems in the community, be it water, be it transport, be it communication, be it food, be, be it anything mm. that you identify. Then after you have identified your problem, then you must come up with what I call a position paper or a proposal. Write a piece of paper not make it complicated like it's a business mm. plan. Just explain what you have seen and what kind of a problem it is. Mm. How the people are feeling about the problem and how do you feel about the problem. Mm. Take that piece of paper, walk up to an academic institution and study for the next three to four years how to solve 
this particular this problem. problem that is in my community. Mm. And while you are studying, you start networking. Namanya Makrutman, who can bring solutions mm. into the same problem. By the time you complete studying here, mm. you actually have a business plan. Yes. If the government was serious in terms of youth development funding, this is the group that needed to be funded. Mm. Who already have studied the problem for four years. Enough practicals, enough theories. Mm. By the time they get out of university, they got to implement the solution which they identified and they have studied. Mm. And now they're implementing. And, and I think it, it creates a seamless value chain between the students and their network. Mm. And them amassing the resources in the community and creating their own businesses, which for me is a perfect solution. So instead of having universities that are waiting for students to come and say, what am I supposed to study? Mm. <laughs> and after they finish studying, they still don't know where they're going to work. And then we talk about unemployment. You're, that, you're, you're suggesting the other way. The student must approach the institution yes. with documented problems. The, in institu the institution. These are the problems I want you guys to help me to solve. That, then, then all the professors become referrals. Imagine in Tuane, we are going to start the radio station. When I, DJ Esbu, you are the, you are the teacher there. Mm. So what are you going to be doing in that radio station? For the next four years, in Tuane, Lay, if you want develop a content. <laughs> okay, I'm a morning show, some fun. So I say, what drive a Afternoon lunch, see shy ganj. Afternoon drive, be to a Night drive, share guns. Other people, you are, you are there now as a source of information and experience. Mm. So people like us will be sitting in the university there to share information with the young people. In yes. that case, you don't need to be a doctor and a professor. Mm. If, if anyone wants to write a book, for example, I've done 15 books in total. I cannot fail to, to, to share information on how to write, how to read, how to proofread, what systems do you need to place your book out there and package it and etc. So that universities actually become ref reference centers mm. of problem solving rather than regurgitating centers of telling us in what other people have done in the past. And one something these guys who are senior lecturers in commerce, mm. Mdawan has never done even a business. He's a poor guy. That is but true. He, he's giving you all the research on how to make money and how to uh, what what how does a business in the economy work? Mm. And he, how, how can you teach me entrepreneurship? You have never sold even a toothbrush mm. or a toothpick. So you find that our universities must actually be populated with real mentors who are the lecturers. And by mentors, I mean people who have walked the path, who have the experience. The young people come into class, informal class or formal class, mm. to be sharing experiences. So, so after you've done the water, you know, how is it going to help me who wants to do agriculture? Mm. And you wanna, we have done in your agriculture. How am I going to assist because I want to do transport? Okay, me, I'm not do transport. So how am I going to assist because I want to do fuel? And, 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 so, and then you begin to look at these communities are studying not away from themselves. Mm. They are studying back into themselves. Right now, the education system we have is a passport of escaping poverty in Africa. 100%. Immediately you hold your degree. The next thing you want is a passport. Yes. Here we are as commercial immigrants from Zimbabwe. Graduated, two degrees behind my back, my passport. And where, where, where can I work? Where can I work? Then students are slowly and quickly migrating away from their problems and leaving their parents and families in the same poverty that they were in to be looking for employment elsewhere. By the time we are talking about immigration and other things, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about a poor education program that made you so educated that you became irrelevant to your own community. I'm a commercial immigrant myself from Guazulu. I came to Johannesburg for money after being educated. Even this whole Dudula process, we must be careful because 60% of everyone in Johannesburg is migrant labor children. Mm. Let's, be, let's be honest. Let's be honest. It's uh, migrant re labor. Real, realistically, because we understand how strong the, the colonization project is, we understand how powerful capitalism is. Mm. Do you think realistically it's possible for us to decolonize and decommodify education so that it's solving problems? There's an amazing song by Dead Press called uh, They Schools mm. that I listened to in varsity and it's it was a huge awakening for me during that whole phase. And it's a school I recommend for a lot of our squatters. They schools by Dead Prayers. Mm. And it speaks about at the end how their schools are not teaching us how to solve their, our own problems. Mm. How to get our families to work together. How to get our fathers back in the home. Mm. The, the entire financial wealth system, minority wealth system in the world is built on pumping as much money, as much drugs, as much alcohol, mm. as much misinformation as possible so that we are not doing what you're proposing. The, 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 the issue you're mentioning is critical because 
education is not just about education now. It has become a commercial hub where universities are mopping money from the community. Yes. Uh, school fees. Where book writers are mopping money. Where food suppliers are mopping money into running these institutions we call universities and education. And above all, the red tape of passing and failing and etc., which is a well-managed and oiled system. I mean, to be honest with you, Hustler, how many Hustlers out there have a degree behind their back? Mm. I mean, even on the top notch to say Bill Gates, to talk about Mang Mang and the Wumutsepe who are making money here, or mm. Ramaphosa, bo, bo, to tell me how many of them can be glutting over a degree behind their back. Yeah. So it's not true. Let's first of all remove that no notion. It's not true. Don't tell your children, get educated, my child, and you get a job and you live nicely. It's not true. Otherwise, um, why are graduates struggling with unemployment? Mm, we've got education, 40% 40 in this country, graduates are unemployed. Education is just a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. Mm. So unless and until education meets the needs of the community and you ushering in a solution, becoming a bridge to what the community needs and they're prepared to pay a premium for it, then you can look at converting a piece of paper into actually an action plan of how you can implement this. But again, how can we transform that? Because for you to be occupied in a political state, you must own this piece of paper. Mm. Not because you can do the job, but because you can do the, the piece of paper. Mm. So the world is suffering right now in the hands of educated people. I'd like to say thank you for the fact that you've written 15 books. I'd like to thank you, Spusiso, for the fact that you've written books. I've written 13 books. Mm. I think one of the things that people need to know is we need to write our own stories, document our own stories, our own solutions. These become our books now saying... These are problems I've identified. This is how I solve them. Mm. Oh, I don't have solutions, but these are things I identified. I released one on Monday, actually, entitled African Questions and African Solutions. I was going to write the first book in the world of that nature from my own philosophical gymnastics, and I was getting excited about it. <laughs> I, I wanted to write a book that had no statement in it. And 60% of that book, African Questions and African Solutions, mm. it's actual questions. There's no... There's no I'm not recommending anything. Mm. I only used the last 20% to say, in some of these issues, this is what I think. Now, the importance of that piece of work that I've done, which is available on Take, on take A Lot right now, mm. it is that many of our masters and graduate students, postgraduate and doctorate students, they are writing these beautiful theses and beautiful papers, mm. but they are answering the wrong questions. So I drafted the seven issues that I'm talking about on the deconstruction. Yeah. Then I went in into each one of those subjects and I bundled them with questions. Mm. So you might find 10, 15 pages of questions asking, for example, economy. Mm. What, is it, what is an economy? Who benefits from it? Yes. What is it built upon? And who, who makes money in an economy? What are the common people doing in an economy? Mm. What is the government doing with an economy? Is there an economics of politics? Is there an economics of religion? Is there an economic of healthcare? Is it, so 14 pages of rattling with questions. Mm. So that if you are supposed to write your PhD degree, for example, you just go in there and pick up that piece of document mm. and pick up those questions. And by the time you answer the first three, four pages of those questions, that's enough research paper already. Yeah. For your, so I'm, I'm, I wrote that paper, that book deliberately to encourage men of our graduate students. And I, I, and I pity them. It's a grace. It's a grace from our ancestors that I was given maybe a slightly faster mind to, to digest quite a, 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 a voluminous quantity of information. Mm. But, but some of our young people out there who have grown up on bubble gum and and conflicts might not have the privilege and the same advantage. And I'm, I'm, mm. saying, so, I'm saying so very gracefully. Yes. That it's not everybody who could vigorously interrogate issues mm. at that level. S somebody who interrogates them nicely, the way you've put them as well, the book that I would recommend is a book called Powernomics mm. by um, Dr. Claude Anders Anderson, I think. Mm. Claude um, Anderson. The book that he had written before that I'd also recommend is um, um, uh, Black Labor, White Wealth. Mm. Breaks them down nicely. I, I recommend it. Go check that out. It's I, I was by Dr. Claude Anderson. Yeah. I was given one by uh, Zim Gawana. Black Music, White Money. Mm. Black Music, White Money. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I'm going to have to go check that out. <laughs> it's an old book. It's an old book. I, book. I have not Quite read interesting. It. We're dropping like, books. The, the yeah. Miseducation of the Negro. Yeah. Dr. Carter... Good. Yo, Dr. Carter Woodson. No, let me give them a nice one. Mm. Go on uh, Telegram. Go there to a page called Reading Club Farmers of Thought. Reading Club, Club Farmers of Thought. FOT. FOT. Okay. FOT. On, on Telegram. Okay. I've uploaded more than 2,500 black books there. 
it's a full virtual library. Okay. So if any one of the students mm. they wants to start reading from the Zoom economics to Black economics to ancient Kemetic knowledge systems to... This is what I wanted to ask when I was saying uh, congrats on the books and congrats on the new book as well. Mm. I wanted to ask because I know we've spoken about it, uh, indigenous nice. knowledge systems and mm. farmers of thought Excuse and, me, and the contribution you, to education. Before he answers that question, sure. can you please remind us the book that you've just dropped on Monday, what is it called? Uh, it's called uh, African Questions and African Solutions. African Questions. And African Solutions, yes. You African can, Solutions. It's on Take A Lot already and on Amazon. Yeah. African Solutions, okay. Mm. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sure. Thing, Sorry, brother. Uh, indigenous knowledge systems, farmers of thought, the work that you're doing. Mm. And I just want to add that uh, I think it's very powerful that you're getting people to begin interrogating the questions that we're asking. Because part of the reason why we're coming up with the wrong solutions might be because we're answering the wrong questions. Yeah. So thank you very much for that. And, and on, honestly speaking, th this decolonization project is rather frustrating because you are coming at the tail end of the conversation when children have already drunk the poison to yeah. the brim. Instead of them asking the, what they drank first, yes. they're asking you, he's questioning what they've, what they've been drinking all along. Why must I go to school? Why must I eat this? You know, they, they've already accepted yeah. that for you to make it in the society, the structure is like this, like this, like this, like this. And you come around and you challenge the very status quo to which they are aspiring for. Mm. And some of them feel like, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's, we've gone too far. Mm. We can't turn back. But I know it took one generation to lose land. It would take one mm. generation to get it back. It took one generation to say, yes, bus. It would take one generation to say, no, bus. <laughs> all, all, it, it just takes one generation. That is, that is sick enough for to being To say, sick Jesus, enough. pack your bags sick and, and go back. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm. As much as one generation says, come in. So for me, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, science fiction. It just, we need to be tired enough. We need to be fed up enough. And we need to be hungry enough for success. Mm. To say for, our, for to ourselves, enough is enough of becoming a dumping yard of European gods, European economics, European politics, and these democratic lies, European education. And finally, I think our generation is beginning to wake up and smell the coffee. That man, hell no. Mm. Someone has been lying to us all along. This fella hanging in the sky, supposed to come back and assist us. <laughs> Looks like he's not coming. And when <laughs> men clap you on know, one cheek, give him the other cheek. And that only appears to black people. <coughs> because a white man is allowed to do that. Qua! And oh, the Bible says, give him the other cheek. What about us as black people? When are we also going to strike the white man? Because we still have a chance also to be given the other cheek. Sure. Let us strike that you make sense? and then you can get totally out of it. Totally makes Wait, sense. Wait, no, you have smashed me, it's fine. You have striked me. It doesn't sure. make sense. And you can get away with no, it. it doesn't. It now, doesn't. When my turn comes, no. <laughs> the Bible says forgive and love those that hate you. <laughs> so this gospel have, 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 have kind of messed up the African mind, killed our zeal, mm. and kind of crippled our, our energy. Mm. Because right now when we look at a white man, we are looking at someone who looks like Jesus. Mm. His fellow white man. You can't fight a man who looks like your savior. Mm. So the, even the iconography itself is colonial. <laughs> because b by accepting the religion, you have already crippled yourself politically. <laughs> mm. I wonder if that, is that making sense? Now, you cannot fight, you cannot fight this because you're working for this. Mm. You, you're already captured by this. Mm. And, and before we notice it, hence, spiritual liberation is, is key. Mm. Because within the spirituality of people is the mindset of the people. Mm. That's where the software lies. The ethics and the morality, the cultural issues, identity. It's settled, it's settled right in the, in the spirituality space. What is spirituality? It's you living in harmony with nature. Basic definition. It's you finding your identity and how you are joined with everything that is around you. Your relationship with nature. Your relationship with nature. It's spirituality. And your relationship with yourself and those that are around you. So it starts off with your self-preservation, mm. cultural, natural preservation and now incorporating of others. So if we can begin off with spiritual liberation, I think we'll be able to know that within spirituality, everything comes down because eating becomes a religious expression. Dancing is a religious expression. Mm. Hunting is a religious expression. Working is a religious expression. Mm. Marrying is a religious expression. So, so therefore, everything on the top, even politics, yeah. it becomes, the politician himself must go and talk. We must install him in power, mm. in, in, in traditional governance. And we must connect him to nature. Mm. Because as a king, he's now the custodian, not only of the people, but of the fish, 
of the grass, of the animals, and everything else. So we literally install a king mm. to be a custodian mm. of that which sustains us. Whereas in a political environment, which is adulterated from our politics, a political leader is supposed to be in the office up there. When it does not rain, the politician does not even know what to do. <laughs> when there's an epidemic, the politician does not know what to do. Whereas in a cultural setting, that's when we cook our beers. That's when we collect our waters. That's when the elders of the city come together and they sit around and say, hey, gentlemen, have we killed someone here without mm. intention? Is it possible that our aura has, has disturbed mm. what is above? What is it that we've done which is causing this? Mm. And in the midst of that interrogation with themselves, solutions are found. Debts are paid. You know, ransoms are, are, are returned. Mm. And then be as a brute. People are not for any mystery that is in the beer. But when a community is in agreement in a spiritual sense, come on, guys, there is something that happens even with it, where there's no God, where there's unity, things go. <laughs> what are indigenous knowledge systems and what is the farmers of thought? Farmers of thought is a, is a jungle of, a, of an institution. I've, I've, I've actually thought I would register it and accept it, but I think I'm falling back in the same trap again of trying to formalize something. I'm trying to keep it as fluid. As, as it can be. Farmers yes. of Thought is an institution where we're introducing our partners and friends and students to multiple facets of Afrocentric perceptions and interrogation of issues. Mm. Basically looking at three estates, the estate of the mind, as to what are we planting and who is planting yes. and what quality of seed do we have. And when you notice that you have the wrong seed in your field, can you go and uproot it? Can you redo the ground mm. and plant again. I'm not talking about the ground, mm. but I'm talking about the mind. Mm. So we use the, the caricature or the illustration of land as a direct parallel with the land as of the mind itself. Mm. So what you do on the land, you work on it, you break it, you plant on it, you trim, prune trees, mm. and you harvest from it. So whoever plants information on your mind has permission to harvest in it mm. because they had access into it. They have access out of it. So now until we can have ownership of our estates of the mind, we cannot be responsible for the next estate, which is the estate of reproduction. Mm. And reproduction speaks of posterity and continuity. What kind of children are we bringing into existence? And what sort of future are we build, building up for them? Mm. Are we responsible for our own reproduction? Or it has become a project again of United Nations <laughs> and our political figures who must decide when you must sleep with your wife and how many children you must make. So our reproduction is now being affected because we don't own the last estate which is the estate of the land, mm. which is where our economics and our roots are. So you cannot give a man land underneath his feet mm. if he does not own the land between his ears and does not own the land between his two legs. I'll say that again. You can't give a man land underneath the ground mm. if he does not own the land between his ears. Between his ears. That's what farmers of thought is about. It's an institution. And he does not own the land between his legs. If you are given this land and you don't own the land above your head. What are you going to do with that land? Because everything is that is exterior is started by what is in here, right? And what I love for me is they are recording mm. these conversations. He's always online. Yeah. Whether he's speaking to people in Nigeria, he's speaking to uh, people in the diaspora community, he's speaking to Pan-Africanists. He's always mm. online, whether he's on Facebook, is on the internet. So somebody else can say, but you have to document it. You have to register it. Mm. But then you'll come and say, according to who? <laughs> and, and, and by the way, when I started doing this, this program, <clears throat> I went on Facebook. Guys come to me, Mapunga J. That is, that is a lokshin, man. A Facebook. You must come to Twitter. And you must come to Instagram. <laughs> Facebook, except pre. Uh, uh, but, but you know the Twitter is, <laughs> Twitter is, Twitter is violent, yeah? <laughs> Twitter, you know, Twitter is me, very violent. For me, what Twitter I love is, is that knowledge has been documented. Yeah. Yes. It's just like the reason why we started this podcast. Mm. This is an educational platform. Bishop, we're meeting a lot of people who are saying, when I first started listening to you guys six months ago to the person that I'm becoming now, mm. I can feel a difference happening in my life there you go. Mm. through just the content that I'm consuming, mm. watching you guys produce. Mm. So for me, when I hear you say what you're saying about farmers of thought and seeing how active you are online, mm. I'm happy that you are not only documenting, writing as many books as possible, mm. you're going to one day unfortunately pass on empty. And that's what we want our leaders to mm, do. Mm, mm. Not only our leaders, but just people with knowledge. Mm. I, I would like for them to pass on with as much knowledge as possible poured into this world for future generations 
to learn from. Mm. The only problems that we'll have is obviously um, the censorship. Mm. But I really mm. do think he's got a lot of content out there. And people like him should record content. Yes. I was trying to encourage our Dr. Lazulu Shaba even last week. He says, no, I don't want to open a Facebook account. <laughs> no, I'm not those things. I mean, I'm fine in my lecture room. Yeah. And then he even said he his lectures are open to even the public. Mm. And then I said, when I visit you one day, I'll capture it. If, if I find Uguti, it's possible to not only capture it once, mm -hmm. Uguti, we make it an ongoing thing. We speak to UCT sure. to agree and officially record your lectures. Yes. Not necessarily for us on the internet, for your class. Yeah. We record each and every lecture. Then we put we, it online. If that's good, let's mm -hmm. go right ahead. Sure. So congratulations with Thank what you. you're doing. Thank documenting you. Yeah. the truth. It's very and, and, and again, the, the, the informal, quote-unquote, informal way of doing my kind of lectures is that you don't you don't want someone to feel like they're in class there and it, 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 it already creates that yeah it has to be it has to be learning. organic so it's, it's once every two days once every three days I th like you're doing also you drop in a line but I, it's shocking mm -hmm. the number of PhD students we have produced from farmers of thought it's shocking the number of papers that I've had to supervise and check behind closed doors it's shocking the number of books I've had to edit and put a forward to from the farmers of thought. It's shocking the number of universities that are actually using my lectures mm. in their mainstream classes. Is, is that not funny? It's beautiful. And, and I get a call from USA and someone says, the teacher took your presentation on Facebook. Yeah. Beautiful. We, we, they actually put it on the board. Wow. And we were studying and we were asked to write a report as to what you're saying. Wow. And what, the other book I, I wrote entitled uh, um, Going Places in the Spirit, mm. University of Massachusetts ordered 15 copies for their library, for the African studies mm. section. So when actually students are doing African studies, they're actually going through my literature. Beautiful. So it, it, it's the fact that it is being done at a simpler, freer space doesn't mean that it's cheap. Mm. The, the bigger institutions out there are actually making money out of this. But I thought where my people are, that's where I belong. Even the poor person, on an Amal again, invest in very Cape Town. Yes. He has a right of sitting next to Maponga J and getting what the person at Harvard is studying on his screen out the, there. The decentralization of education. Of education. Yeah, that's what it. are indigenous knowledge systems? Indigenous knowledge systems are the blueprint of the past. Survival techniques, artistic crafts, you know, medicines, and all, it's, it's in a whole amalgamation of cultural survival and the amount of research and experiments that our forefathers and ancestors did, mm. tempering around with materials, tempering around with patterns of cosmology, weather patterns and etc. Their entire understanding from the animal kingdom to flora, to agriculture, to land, to soil, to crafting, to what. When you put all that information together, mm. your university is too small to contain that amount of information. Yes. That when a woman is pregnant, another woman can wash her hands in some chemical, lie her down and move her hands on top of the, and the baby without being touched will turn in the womb and face the canal. Now that's, that's, that's science. Yes. That's science. It, 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 it's its best. Yes. That when chickens are fighting in the yard and my grandfather says, yeah, get ready. Some visitors are coming. And for sure, before you finish it, one of those chickens were eating it tonight. And you are able to read when you see clouds of this nature and say, yeah, yeah, this year we're going to have locusts. Oh, man, bad guys. This year, it's going to be dry. And they are able to interpret all these things by this way in the direction the wind is blowing and be able to tell mm. that this animal is sick without putting a thermometer in it. Mm. By simply looking at the dung of a cow, they can tell whether this animal has eaten poison or stuff like that. Mm. Now, to me, that's knowledge that breathes with us mm. constantly without even going to school to study. To be able to look at a paw, a paw of a lion in the bush and tell it passed by here three days ago and it went in this direction, <laughs> and it's actually sick. It has a broken leg because the nail is dragging on the... On the <laughs> small little thing like that. I get excited. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, who killed this for us? I get, who ah, destroyed these systems for us? Because they've been there. I can't feel it, man. Mm. You just need to take off your shoes, Panuel. Mm. It, 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 it's the first today, Panuel. Yes. By the way, we're recording this episode on the first, mm. and it's going out this Monday. The Monday is sure. going to be the fifth, right? Mm. What's the date on Monday? Um, it's, the it, it's the 7th. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, look at the flowers. It, be the seven. Today is, it Today, must be the 5th. One, two. Yeah, the 5th. The 5th, yeah. 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 
So you look at it's it's African New Year. It is African New Year. And and I think what's going to be exciting with some of the work we're doing on the virtual cook is, it's not just the rebirth of nature this year in 2022. Some people believe in uh, numbers, numerology. Mm. It seems like there's a rebirth just of the mind in itself. Um, the talk you gave about the, the three estates, between the ears, between your legs, under your feet. I remember you did an interview with a, a, a brother of ours, a brother of DJ Thibaut Touch, mm. and it's, it's trended and it, it was mind blowing. And I'm, I'm so thankful that you, you're rehashing this because some of this information, some of the virtual squatters that watch us are going to be hearing it for the first time and it's going to blow their minds. We keep on saying it. And, and by the way, you know, repetition is all. Yes. We keep on saying it. You cannot marry my child before you make the, the ground pregnant. Mm -hmm. Get the ground pregnant first. Then you can get a woman pregnant. What does that you, mean? You must love the ground first mm -hmm. before you can love a woman. Learn to look after the ground. Mm -hmm. Then you can learn how to look after a woman. We keep on saying it again when the face is beautiful and the software is not working. <laughs> hardware suffers. Farmers <laughs> of thought, farmers of thought, FOT on Telegram. <laughs> oh. When a country is beautiful and leadership is not working, the resources are messed up. I messed up. So it's, it's a thinking space, yes. uh, Buffett. We are, we, are, we are in a philosophical way of blowing up small little things and creating a thinking pattern so that there is an awakening of some sort in your in your in your in your spirit mm. when i say to, to you who can touch your woman and you can be comfortable and say, no one can touch my woman but what do i allow why are you allowing them to touch your your, your land mm. you know someone has, has a mixed feeling of anger yes and say but <laughs> how can i only be personal about this and i can't be personal about it so the conversation is intended to cause an, an awakening mm. in the spirit of the african and say we need to look back in ourselves and say these things are entrenched in us and we cannot allow ourselves to become second-class citizens in our own land. Where, where do people go? A young child is listening and they want to go somewhere. Telegram, Farmers of Thought, your Facebook page, because they want to start this journey. They want... Farmers of Thought. Farmers they want to thought. wake up. They yeah. want to wake up. They want to own the real Farmers of Thought has mind. been running from 2010, 2011. There's a lot of work that I've put out there, mm. both written and video. You go to Google and you type in Farmers of Thought. Farm, Facebook. Farmers Facebook. of Thought. Joshua Maponga, I, 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 farm, Farmers of Thought. Or Maponga, G, I, I, Farmers of Thought. Mm. It's there. And then what you do, if you are a young student, don't, don't come here towards the 2021s, 20, 2020s, mm. because the, the soup was getting much thicker. <laughs> you know? you, you, and I know many of you young hustlers there, you are recovering addicts from the Christian perspective. So you may want to start, <laughs> you may want to start right in the 2010s, mm. 2009s when I started mm. and I was quoting Bible verses and then I will always have the extension of the, the verses here. But do you also see the picture here? You know, mm. if, if they say uh, the, 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 the white man is the, is, is the Jew right now in Jerusalem, so is it possible that white people were, are the ones who were slaves? in Egypt mm. during the times of Moses. And I'm just causing you mm. to begin to think, so are we saying that whites were actually slaves in Africa for 400 years? Mm. And if the Bible says, you are my people, you'll be taken over as slaves to lands afar. So did the white people go to America as slaves? And, and, and so you be, I, I, be, I was already beginning to deconstruct some of these misunderstandings and misnomers, mm. which have made themselves into the religious space and have been accepted as truth. So it, it'll be safe for young students. Start at the back. Don't feel yes. bad. And slowly begin to move up. By the time you hear me, you see me burning the white Jesus in 2018, 2019. And I did a ceremony by myself <laughs> to burn the white Jesus. <laughs> I burned him myself. I said, he tell him to come down from heaven <laughs> and redeem himself from me. I, you, you need to understand I have matured <laughs> to, <laughs> to that understanding. So if you... Go backwards, you may be frustrated. So, and this is all on Facebook? It's all on Facebook. Okay, lovely. The journey has been documented. Even from, from when you started, all on Facebook. All on Facebook. Oh, this is beautiful. All on Facebook. Oh, it's beautiful. And I, I, some people, young people come to me and say, no, we want you to mentor me, mentor me. I said, you're not ready. Go back. Yeah. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. I've got 10, 15 students who have come up, and none of them has, has come back. Mm. I said, okay, you want me to mentor you? Good. Now, go on my Facebook page. Cut and paste every document that I've written. Mm and create the first document. Bring that document to me. Mm. And that'll be your first assignment. No one has come back. Yeah. They're not ready. No one has come back. Because I say, if you bring that work, then I'll say, translate it. Mm. Or start interrogating it. Start questioning it and mm. creating questions. You cannot tell me that I've been working here now for the past 15 years and putting content out 
and you want mentorship, and yet you're not interested in knowing exactly how I've been building to where I am now. If you're not ready, just go home. Because that's home. already mentorship. Go back yeah. and document. That's, that's already, already mentorship. mentorship. You're already changing his life. If you can read assignments that I've done, documents that I've put out for, putting out for the past 10, 15 years, mm. do you still need me to mentor you? Hmm. Plus that's videos. mentorship. That's everything. Then you notice that they just, they just use this word for cosmetics. They just want to see you oh, I can mentor you. Be close to you. I don't, I don't, I don't mentor anybody. Hey, I'm a few of your follower. You follow. I said, don't <laughs> stop following me. I don't want anyone to follow me. Walk with me here. Come on. I want company. Don't tell me you're walking behind me as if you are, mm. you're going to be critiquing me as to what I'm doing here. Mm. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. So don't follow me anyway. <laughs> I've got two quick questions. The first one is, how did you get it right after being such a great leader in the church, I think it was for 30 years or so, how did you get it right to still be able to retain your mental integrity from your ancestors to be able to have that spiritual revolution without being contaminated deeply beyond repair? And then secondly, we spoke about education. Zimbabwe has got one of the greatest education systems on this continent. And yet to what you were saying earlier, the people seem, it seems like that colonized education infiltrated their minds and they have now left their land to come to places like South Africa. All right. Uh, if I forget on the Zimbabwe and you remind me, I want to respond to the first one first. Mm. The, uh, how, how did I get it right? I did not get it right. I just became selfish. I did 30 years of thorough work with the church mm. and I gave myself a retirement. I closed books and I decided it's time to focus at me. Mm. I, I've been having questions for the longest of time. I've been built naturally like that with a highly interrogative mind. And the church would not allow me to expand mm. and question them and the system from within the system. So one morning I woke up and I put my religious garments down. And if you may, you may remember, mm. I even made a declaration on Facebook and I said, no, stop calling me a bishop and etc. I'm no longer interested in that title. Because some of you guys who have known me as a bishop when you see me now going to, to start my journey with the traditional healers, mm. starting my journey with the African royalties, mm. start my journey, that's when I went and visited Babu Kredo Mutwa. I had the privilege of interviewing him before one of the, my books when I was writing Going Place in the Spirit. Mm. Spent some few days with him, writing Kurumani there, and etc. And when I put the picture up on Facebook, you can, the picture is there. Yeah. You can go and read the comments that are there. You have become a witch, mm. you have become a sangum, you have become, you are talking to the devil, you have become a child of Satan. And what and you're looking at so I said, if my personal journey as an author, I want to put a book out there that will be honest. So I asked Baba Kredumoto a simple question. How do you live a spiritual life? What does it mean to become spiritual? Mm. And there I'm documenting. Because I'm writing a book. Mm. So and, and because I interviewed the person whom I think is spiritual, you want to control me as to how and who must I interview when I'm mm. writing my words. Then I felt I felt offended, honestly. Yes. And said, just take your title, go and give it to someone who needs it. It was good when I was having it and I was doing what I was doing. Mm. But from where I'm doing now, I'm doing me now. Mm. And I read one small little article, it was in a video also by Miles Monroe, who was saying, as long as you're still using a title, mm. maybe your name is not yet big enough. Yes, sir. So I took the word Bishop and I put it aside and I said Maponga J. Mm. Okay, so I don't have to call you Bishop Maponga anymore. I don't know what I mean. Maponga J. How do you address a 53-year-old man in your own tribe? Does it offend you? To be what? To be called bishop? No, no it's, it's a title that I've grown up with. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, don't use it if you will be offended. Yes. And you find me doing things that you don't think the title goes with. Do you, do you think other people need a push, an awakening? Because it seems like you decided self. You woke up yourself. Do you think that some other people need it or do you think it's enough to just live and those that are ready like the students? Mm. I'm watching... Usbusi Soliope now going through his own journey. Mm. It's confusing a lot of people and just like you, they, strong. they are criticizing Bazo Bazo strong. Why is your hair like this? He's going through a journey and <laughs> Bazo Bazo strong. I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> does he speak about his journey mm. or must he just exist and be and then those who are ready you are will even, come you are, and show you are themselves. even lucky that he is sharing it with you. Yeah. He does not owe nobody an explanation. He doesn't need to tell nobody what is happening. Mm. I mean hell no. You got your own problems. She got her own problems. He got her own problems. Everyone's got their own issues. So what, what makes you think that you won't know what's happening to me? Mm. So that what will happen to you after you know what's happening to me? Mm. It's none of your business. It's actually a privilege for people to see us grow 
and develop in their eyes, mm. then it is doable that a whole bishop of a church can begin to ask critical questions and reinvent himself to a level of understanding and create new paradigms and etc. Then it's possible mm. that if a man like me, I did not, it was more difficult to make the decisions I'm making because I already have people that I have baptized hmm. into hmm. this theory. That you saved. Mm. I have churches that I have built. Hmm. I have members that I have married. <laughs> and by, I, the, my, my res responsibility towards the very community I'm walking away from is the size of a mountain. Hmm. But some of them are even sending messages to you on the day they baptize you. Do you remember you baptizing me? They're sending you pictures. And they want still to tap on your conscience. Like to say, you've gone far away, man. May mm. the Lord bring you back. You know, we miss you. We... So for me, with all this responsibility, if I could make such a decision, mm. I mean, some of you guys have not done, you're not as responsible as we are. It should be much easier <laughs> to make a, a decision that is selfish for personal development. So yes, it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not for anybody. And I felt I was dying from inside. I felt like my, my brains were going to explode mm. because I was being pushed into a corner of so, so much colonial education and religious expectations where you're supposed to do this and this Jesus is coming again. If you don't do this, then it, and I was losing my brain. Do you believe your ancestors inside you got tired of you living a fake life and they started fighting back within you and it manifested outside? My brother, you cannot say it better than that. I think it was just a moment of truth for me. To say, I cannot lie to myself all along. Because even the pastor himself who says he's born again, Holy Ghost, the pastor who is tongue lashing and etc. <laughs> he still dreams also at night. Why am I putting mm. out my phone, including Cre uh, uh, um, Creflo Dollar? Mm. Yes. Um, he apologized for, well, for his <laughs> teachings. <laughs> On, on tithing, tithing. Yeah, right, right. over the years. But I didn't pay back the money. Creflo paid back the money. So what I wanted to ask is, you know, we allow people to grow. That's what I say as well. But guys, that's the old me. You guys are posting pictures of me wearing suits. That's good, and I appreciate the compliment. Oh, you used to look nice here. According to who? That was me then. Mm. But this is me now, and mm. I can't explain. Isn't that a conversation what a, what a, you must have with people that genuinely love you? Um, I don't have to explain yes, to you don't. what I'm going through. Yes, you don't. And that's, that's, that is true. Mm. Because some people who love me, you know, because we're public figures, they'll call. With, like, mm. are you really okay? Um, because of, you know, how social media may report these things sometimes. But it's a beautiful journey to go through. Mm. And everybody goes through and it it's at, personal. Their, at their own time. And it's personal. Mm. And it's personal. And you can't explain it. Sure. Because you can't explain it. You can't even properly articulate it. Mm. Because what I'm going through is what I'm going through. I can't, I can't explain it, bro. Mm. I can't explain it. And it's, it's do you, beautiful. Do you, do you ever think of a, of a young... It's so beautiful. Do you ever think of a young <laughs> DJ Spoo watching you back then, curious? You tell him, look, I, I can't articulate it. And he might really want to know. Because we're speaking about decolonizing, we're speaking about sharing indigenous knowledge systems. Some of us are naturally curious, and that's why we're able to find and seek certain knowledge. This is why I was asking earlier, do you think some people need to be nudged, need to be explained to? This is my journey. I will tell you in case you ever find yourself in the same space. Or is it, guys, find yourself. I'm not going to tell you my story. Find your own story. If it aligns with mine, then we'll find each other. Otherwise, just be. Bishop, oh. Correction, Maponga J. Yeah. Last week, Saturday in Whitbank said, "Knowledge of self is the highest form of education." Mm -hmm. I repeat, Maponga J. said last week in Whitbank, "Ere chisanya, mama." E chwale, e ya ishi. I was beautiful. E mama. I was so excited. That was nice. That was too nice. And big up to the guys that put it together. You know, taking such information to a play like big up, chilanati. Big up, big up to big up to Whitbank. Knowledge of self is the highest form of education. I think with the work that we're doing, Peño, including Abo Mkulun the our Inzaluelanga tour, that's an educational tour. Yes. I'm bringing my moms, I'm bringing my daughter, I'm bringing my family, mm. you know? It's an educational tour. Um, the books that we, he's recommending, his platform, the information is sharing what we're doing on this platform. Yeah. And 
reading those types of books about Mkulun Tsengiza, about Jihante Diop, about George G. James, and some Clark, of the... Yeah, yeah about, about John Clark, C. Clark. Some of the... His writings, his articles, yes. taking... He's even just said it now in this video, and it's a challenge to you squatters and hustlers out there from 2010. Some of you guys who are willing to be mentored, and I can only imagine how long it'll take you to go read all of that mm. work from 2010. Might take you a year or even less. <laughs> but as soon as you are done, then you can reach out to him and say, I was prepared because I saw you on spring day mm. at, on the Hustlers Court on Virtual Mkuku. Yeah. This is what you said. I went for the past nine months and this is what I did. Now I'm ready to be mentored by you. Mm. But this is what I can tell you. But also, as soon as you read all of that information, he already knows that you're actually not even going to have to come to him to be mentored. You won't. The work is already done. So mm. my answer to you is, somebody who will go through or go down that rabbit hole mm. that we are sending them to. Mm. At their own time, they'll understand what I'm going through. And maybe on that whole thing. Don't, don't judge someone else who has started their journey mm. because your journey has not yet started. Mm. You know, it's amazing that you could, a good Christian brother or good Christian sister right now who thinks that they are Staff is, I almost said the word, who we'll think that their staff is together. And they've not seen any problem with what they're having right now. Mm -hmm. And they're so comfortable, like I was. Yes, very some, happy and some content 10, 15, and winning. years ago, flying around Kenya, Namibia, mm. preaching, guest speaker, you know, sleeping in splash hotels. Thank you, Jesus. And thing in the name of man, in my Hallelujah. And, and, and there was nothing wrong. Yes. I was at, I was at it and I was enjoying it. Mm. And the fact that I was there, how bad do I feel now? when I became judgmental to some of those who had started their journey towards their own destinies. Mm. And similar to you also, if you're watching me, watching DJ's move, think there it is, Mahrutman, they're getting flipping confused. Don't worry. <laughs> your time will come. There's another book that we released the last year, Find Your Truth. Mm. Find Your Truth. It's also on Amazon. It's also on Take A Lot. Find your truth. It's not my truth. Mm, find your just, truth. Just what is that you call your truth? If your truth is colonial knowledge system, is your truth, your traditional, what is your truth, your teacher's education, is mm. your truth, your academic thing, what is it that you can call this is my truth? Mm. Many times people woke up and said, che, I believe, I believe this is, and says, shut up. You don't believe nothing of what you have said. Say I've been told to believe this. Mm. Because if I should interrogate your process of thinking to come to that conclusion, I'll find a group of teachers indoctrinating you and brain, brainwashing you. At the end of the day, I believe. He broke it down so nicely on that um, concept of the thinking tool. I don't, you don't have it right now. It would have been beautiful mm -hmm. to illustrate it here on this video. Mm -hmm. I would have really I can loved it. Do you need a stick nine, do? Yeah. Um, I can use my cup. Yeah, that's you can use the <laughs> cup. Oh, that's why you came with okay. it. Yeah. I would like for it. He simplified it so beautifully. Echuale, okay. Baba. Echuale. I wanted to emphasize to what you were saying about the, the squatters that want to start their journey. When the student is ready, mm. the teacher, the will, teacher appear. will appear. So let's, it's, let's it's up to you. We're not going to force you. Mm. All we're doing, like Morpheus in the Matrix, is we're showing you that there's another door. Yeah. It's really up to you, Red Pill Nation, if you're willing to walk through it. So the thinking tool will be designed something like this. It will have three columns on it. So if it was, usually I carry my stick or my spear. That has the same illustration. So you have one block of time, second block of time, three block of time. So let's say this represents the past. Of course, that's where our destiny sits on. It sits on the past, mm. where we're coming from. This becomes the present, which is actually an, incub an incubant, like a container, mm. where stuff from the past is all locked up here to create what we call the present. I like in the opening part here, it represents the future, full of opportunities. <laughs> the unknown and ready to be filled in with new possibilities and etc. So the past, the present, and the future. And then the first ring that is here would say that represents the Western education. Mm. The second ring that is here would say that represents the Northern education. Then the third ring that is here, it represents the Chinese and the Eastern education. And the last ring that is here, let represent the African, which is the Ubuntu kind of thing. So when you ask me a question, I ask myself seven questions mm. before I even answer you. What was it like in the past? Mm. What is it like in the present? What will it be like in the future? How are the Americans doing it? How are the Europeans doing it? How are the Chinese doing it? And how are the Africans doing it? Mm. Then you process all sorts of concepts within that thinking tool. 
so that you be it education. Mm. How are we being educated in the past? How are we being educated in the present? What does the education of the future look like? What are the Americans educating their, educating their children on? Mm. What are the Chinese and the Europeans educating their children on? And what are the Africans doing? Mm. Ask me a question of marriage. How are we marrying in the past? How are we marrying in the present? How will we marry in the future? How are the Americans getting married? How are the Europeans getting married? How are the Chinese and Indians getting married? How are the Africans getting married? In conclusion, many times we think like this as Africans. Mm. Firstly, we want to prioritize the Americans, the Europeans, the Chinese, and the Africans last. But the correct way of thinking must be from this way. Ubuntu first. Mm. We interpret the world from ourselves towards them. Mm. So firstly, if you are talking about marriage, I don't have to worry about what the Europeans are saying. I don't want to worry about what the Americans and the Chinese are saying. The question is, what do I say here? So here is an African who is busy trying to get a white dress. Mm. But an African who wants a white dress, a European ring, and a Chinese shoe to get married <laughs> as an African. And you wonder why these things are not working. But because we are taking what does not belong to us, and we are prioritizing it, and we are undermining exactly the essence of our being. Mm. So in terms of thinking, you can process I can take my, my thinking tool or my cup like this and I can sit in the garden and I can just pick up a subject in my mind and I start just processing it through without talking to anybody and you find me giggling <laughs> all by myself. For example, I'm let's like, move to the next subject. We said from education we're going to, we said politics or we said yeah. politics. No, no, I, want, I wanted to speak about mm. uh, the real estate of the mind and the fact that it's been tempered with by colonial education. Mm. Zimbabwe has got one of the best as far as we know, education systems on the continent, which mm. is colonial. And yet we're seeing their people running away from their land. Yeah. We're seeing their people, hey, when you sure, speak now, sure even about us. health and reproduction coming to South African hospitals. We heard a story recently with the MEC of Limpopo, Dr. Popi Ramatuba. As a, as a Zimbabwean yourself. Ask me why. Zimbabwe is one of the most educated countries in Africa. But I can say this publicly. It is the most uncultured country in Africa. They don't even have a traditional dress as a country. Culture has been thrown away totally. The epitome of our excellence in British education has totally obliterated the sense of a Zimbabwean when it comes to culture and ethnicity and belonging. We have glimpses in Matabeleland, which have remained. But even then, it's because of the Zulu Thing. But as a nation, mm. in totality, it's a shame that the, the, the filling up of education is actually emptied out our sense of cultural knowledge systems. And again, let's understand the politics of migration. I, will, I, will, I, will, I want to take a, take a very weird look on that issue, mm. which is an irregular look, rather, as I'm popularly known. Anglo-American must actually pay the bills for all the Zimbabweans that are here, mm. that are coming for treatment. Because they are, they are stealing platinum in Zimbabwe. And the law is protecting them from stealing the platinum. All right? Mm. They are coming to Zimbabwe and they say they are collecting platinum ore. And they are only paying tax for the ore. And they come to sort of Rassenberg here, and then they clean up the ore to take out of it the gold, the chrome, mm. and 18 other minerals, which they are not declaring profits in yeah. Zimbabwe. They are only paying the Zimbabwean government the money for the rubbish they took from the ground mm. with everything that is in it, and they bring it to South Africa. Your iron, your chrome and platinum ores that are in Prastenburg here, I beg to differ, 30 to 40% of that is actually Anglo platinum in Zim. Mm. So if you look at that profit that is migrating across the border, job cre jobs that are being stolen from the country, mm. the economy that is being robbed by this thing. And of course, small-minded will argue that this is business. But that's the point exactly. Mm. Because when a business is illegitimate and law protects illegal, I'm saying illegal in terms of what is not right for humanity to mm. do to each other, and law protects these businesses. What I'm mm. saying right now, I cannot stand for it in court. Okay? Mm. Because the government approves it. <laughs> and the government of South Africa approves it. Mm. 
and the truth, there's bilateral, what they're doing is legit. But in the midst of the legitimacy of the business, it doesn't mean that this thing is legit. Mm. It is daylight robbery. And for, the, for crying out loud, the least the Anglo-Platinum, Anglo-American can do mm. is to take a good amount of their money from, from Platinum mm. and give it to the Department of Health mm. so that the Department of Health can cater for the health system inclusive to the foreigners mm. who are here coming following the platinum that has been stolen from their country. Your gold here in South Africa here mm. is now 15 kilometers down in, in Lebanon. It's unminable. 60% mm. of the gold that is on your stock exchange right now is Congo and Zimbabwe because we're still on Alluvia. We're still on open casts. Mm. 60% of your diamonds here are Zimbabwe and Congo and Angola diamonds. But the Kimberlite is being approved from here. So what you may call the South African economy, it's actually these neighboring countries that are sustaining. You have the system now mm. that is well oiled and running. And multinational companies that have put their tentacles in the smaller countries that are around. Lesotho, Zimbabwe, Swaziland, and Zambia, and Mozambique, and etc. And, and, and Congo. And you're able to mop up all these resources and standardize them for the international community. Beautiful business plan. Your JSE is flourishing. Figures are going up and down. But look at the bottom of the food chain on a small basic need of health. Mm. I want to argue that the amount of profit platinum and gold and diamonds is making in this country is not even worth talking about in terms of the health bill that people at the bottom are complaining for. I don't care in which country they are coming from. Mm. South Africa, the least we can do. If we are clean and open enough in terms of having a business conversation, mm. the issues that I'm saying, I beg to be challenged on them. But realistically, it's not going to happen. It's so not going to happen. What, what do you suggest for Zimbabweans that are here? If we're saying they create education, uncultured, of course, when will they ever go home? Because that's what some black South Africans want. Go back home and fix your country. Why are you here? You are, and yes, you might say you're following your minerals, but then go fight for your minerals back home. You are, Why you are, are they coming out? It's because you're not even there to protect them. You are saying something very important. Because going back home, it's again an African question as to where is home. Yes, where but is home? Let, let us look at the system that we have glorified for the longest of time called democracy. Mm. And in its democratic practices, it actually undermines the lives of the common people. Mm. And we are sending each other to death wards. Mm. And as Africans, it's not Ubuntu like that. We know as South Africans, when you are saying go back home, we are pushing our fellow Africans back into the hall of darkness. It's like chasing me to poor, poor parts of Wazulu when an, and say go home. When an African has come here to South Africa and has come to hospital, he's already showing you that he's in trouble. But Zimbabwe is not poor. It's not poor. I know that it's said it's poor, mm. but Zimbabwe is not poor. But the facilities... You, you, mean, you mean the, the country or do you mean economically? What do you the mean country, by it's not poor? The country is not poor. Mm. I actually wanted to ask a question around that. But I wanted to speak about a rebirth because the stories I've heard about Zim. But please, if you can just... I, I want to backtrack a little bit. And I want to maybe... I might sound a bit controversial, but the advantages and the blessings that Mugabe brought and the disadvantages that he brought. Yes. Mugabe brought the sense of nationhood. He brought the land back to the people. He, he played quite a critical part in mm. many issues. The downbeat of that is that while he was so good in these few in these issues that he was handling, mm. the infrastructure issues were neglected. Mm. And unfortunately, lots of criminology activities and corruption was brewing right underneath his nostrils while he was focusing on another. He wasn't involved in that? He, 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 I would not be able to confirm. I was here. Okay. I was here with you. Okay. But with the hospitals that were standing in the 1980s started collapsing. Even issues of paint, basic stuff, Mm. To, to look at it. And that's the time when diamonds had started. And I, 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 I believe in a dictator, but dictate the right thing. Imagine just going to Chiazwa there, digging up a bucket of diamonds. Mukabe was a dictator. I'm saying I believe in a, in a Hitler was a dictator, so Trump is a dictator. The Queen <laughs> is a dictator. You in your house, you're a dictator also. You've never asked for your children to vote for you to make the next child. So that's a, that's a conversation for another day. Mm. The dictatorship is what we run on. But I know it's being used in a derogative way. Okay. But when you, when you look at when you look at the, the dilapidation of the infrastructure that happened under his watch, and I went back into the country now, mm. 
when I saw what the Second Republic was beginning to do, mm. which is under ED, I know he's already coming with a lash on his back because he's inheriting the party that had failed. But when I saw the airports being built and I saw the roads being fixed, mm. I saw new hospitals, wards being put up together, mm. and I'm seeing new airports being put together. Oil has just been found the other day. Power is being fixed up in, in, in. and that, that's what, that's the reason I'm in Zimbabwe actually. Mm. I, I saw some new Zimbabwean gold coins as well. Yes, yes. We, we're throwing away the American dollar back into the coin. And for me, these are the kind of things that are happening. Yes, the people are in South Africa here looking for treatment and the politicizing of people's health, mm. even for our honorable MEC. I think on the vow of being a medical personnel, it's, 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 it's bad taste. I don't even want to talk about that. You take a vow as a nurse to say you're going to be looking after a patient, no matter who, where they are, and etc. But would Zimbabwe be wel welcoming of people that are so-called <laughs> illegal foreigners in their institutions my, with my, their limited uh, budgets? I, I love my Many South Africans have had accidents in Zimbabwe while on holiday. Mm. Did we, did you, have you ever heard of them being chased away? But it's probably a numbers game. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a numbers I'm, game. I'm, I'm saying, do you have a sensitivity and an understanding of why black South Africans, who are also poor, because when you speak about let dilapidating me, infrastructure, let, let me, let me when you speak let, about let poverty, for you. South Africa is, is split in two. So <laughs> we can speak about a, a rich South Africa and rich white people. But in the same way, Zimbabwean people are, are suffering. If you look at the Eastern Cape, parts of Limpopo, parts of Guazulu, Northern Cape, Pumalang, there are poor people there like Zimbabweans who migrate like I have to Johannesburg. But what we hide behind, of course, is that Palama South African. You are not. So I'm saying... They also have that frustration of, but we have limited resources, which our rich blacks and rich whites have cities for us that yeah, have an ID, and, and now there are the people coming in. Resources are not here. limited, uh, um, Lodge. These resources are being returned back to government every year. <coughs> <coughs> Let's not even go there. You have been here, you are active on that space. But I want to share this thing with you that will mess up your mind a little bit. The South African government, particularly ANC, is not failing. I want to qualify that. Mm. The infrastructure of apartheid was created to look after the white people. Mm. Full stop. Blacks were not included in the infrastructure development. In other words, Johannesburg was built, for example, to live, say, 600,000 people. Mm. The roads were built for that. The sewage was built for that. The water supply was built for that. Mm. And the infrastructure would cater for that. Mm. And them, the white people, becoming the key of enjoying the 600,000 number. Of course, maybe 200,000, the rest are servants and slaves, and etc. Sure. Boom, 1994 comes. South Africa for all. Build up Cosmo. Build up more in Tembisa. Build up, build up South Africa. Now you put another three, four, five million people around mm. the city of Johannesburg to a burden of an infrastructure that was initially built to house only X number of people. And then you walk around and ANC is failing. ANC is failing. ANC is failing to think mm. that the amount of people and housing projects that you are putting around the cities that were built by apartheid, the city itself does not have capacity to house the number of people that you're not putting around. Hence the my other video there, they don't seem just think of creating new cities. Mm. But that's a, that's a failure in itself. The failure to plan. You're having more children in your house and you're telling the kids which are the reason you're sleeping on top of each other is because. We built this house for two kids. Now there's seven of you. Isn't that a failure in itself? As, as a leader, you understood that this infrastructure was for 10%, yeah. the whites. And you realize you're now going to be running the entire country. Shouldn't you be prioritizing, multiplying the ESCOMs? That, that, that's, that's where you as a young man can help me there. Yeah. Because now you're talking about electricity. You're now talking about water. You're talking about sewage. You're talking about roads. Even later on, employment mm. and capacity. And now when you look at this concept on its own, and then you expand it to a continent space mm. so that we can respond later on to the health issues. Yes. We need to understand that the economies and the cities of Africa were not built with black people to participate and be involved in the, in the benefits mm. that the infrastructure is giving. Mm. So what you are having in South Africa is a spillover mm. of a failed understanding yes. of how do I expand, protect, increase the capacity of my city and budget for it in such a way that the amount of people that are now within the residential area of this can have access to one, water, two, education, three, roads, four, health, and et cetera, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. So by the time you see these people jumping over and coming, it's a stress call. Yes. So I would want to make an appeal. 
I want to make an appeal to my government, even in Zimbabwe while I'm here. Yes. That please, Honorable, Honorable Mnangagwa and the parliament and the government in Zimbabwe is never too late to have built up one of the biggest hospitals we need right now is in Baitbridge. Mm. Because that is the border through which people are running off. Yeah. And the resources from South Africa can be easily be transported across the border. So we can actually have one of the best hospitals right at the gate where people are running away into South Africa. Mm. What is happening in Louis Trichard and what's happening in Messina, weather and everything else, we are literally one kilometer away from each other. Yeah. So there's no reason of thinking maybe you are going to transport these things another 500 kilometers in Just here. So it's across the road. So the government can actually work on a plan of making Bait Bridge Hospital a state hospital, state of the art, where equipment and etc. can be moved across mm. at a very little cost mm. so as to cushion for that. And secondly, on top of that, it is that while we are expanding our health facilities, we also needed to take care of our basic health issues. What are the causes of disease? Mm. Because we need not only to fix the problem when it comes, but be proactive in protecting it before it comes. 100%. For me, it's just two questions. Um, when you were here, a lot of the criticism that you used to get is uh, what you were saying earlier. Why don't you go back home? Sure. And fix the problem from within, mm. from home. You've gone and back, I went. You've gone back and home. And I went home. And um, having gone back home, currently I'm seeing, when I get into your videos, uh, even last weekend, even in Whitbank, when the videos go out, a lot of criticism is... Um, but you are now part of a ZANU-PF movement that is oppressing us. That's what people are saying mm -hmm. online. So my question is, what is your involvement with ZANU-PF mm -hmm. currently? Mm -hmm. And um, are you back in South Africa again or are you just visiting? Are you going back home? And okay. what is the future looking like for Maponga? And I'll, start, I'll start with the last one. I'll start with the last one. I am, <laughs> I am, in, um, I am in Zimbabwe. I'd, I'd flown in for that function. And while I'm here, I thought I'd spend an extra few days with uh, you. Thank you so much. And my kids and et cetera. So, but I'm fully in Thank you. Thank you so the much. The issue of uh, ZANU-PF, I had an option of joining MDC then. And I'm glad I didn't. Because hardly three months I was there, MDC was dismantled and it became something else. Then I would have become a baggage <laughs> in chasing a new party <laughs> that, that is coming up, which is now CCC. But given an option between joining opposition or giving my voice to the one who is holding the instruments of power. Mm. And I made a call to Chamisa. I will say this publicly, on internet, on Facebook, on WhatsApp, even personal calls. He would not answer me, he would not reply. For five years, just at the death of, Ch of uh, Tsongirai. Mm. And he ignored me. So after five years, I said, maybe a young man doesn't want to talk to me. So I went back into him, and I decided I will work with those that are willing to work. So I made a phone call to the president. And in three days, I was given audience. Come through. Welcome back. What do you want to do? What are the challenges and et cetera? I said, can I see your national plan and what pro programs are you planning to do? Because I'm setting up a media house in Zimbabwe for positive news, strictly mm. for positive news. Because having noticed the amount of stories that are coming out of the country, I just, there's lots of good things that are happening in the country and no one is talking about them. That's why I was saying to you earlier that Zimbabwe is wealthy. This is what there's I want us to get to. Zimbabwe, sure. So. Yeah. So ultimately, I, 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 I made a conscious decision. I know it was a politically compromised because men of the youth thought that by me joining CCC or joining hands with Chamisa, it would add their voice. And shame was also some, on some of them mm. who wanted me to join Chamisa because I'm a louder voice. They wanted to make me as a sacrificial lamb. They're not willing to do In it. In case the ruling party would be angry with me, mm. then if the party would beat me up or kill me, then they'll have a bigger story and say, they also killed and they also beat up so and so. Mm. And I'm not willing to become a messiah, mm. as you always say. I'm not willing to put my... I've, I've my, said it before, yes. I'm not willing to die for the people who don't know what they need to be done to them. And who are not worth dying for, and unfortunately. The, 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 it's a very controversial uh, uh, statement. The, the, word but, story, the word story will be another story. Yeah. But I felt that the sacrifice would be too big. Why would I die when I can work? Mm. So when the president opened up his, his doors to say, find what you can do. Tell us how you can assist. I'm running their strategic planning sessions. I'm talking to the politburos. I'm talking to the politicians. What, how to deliver services. When you are given seeds by the government, what must you do with them? Mm. How do you treat the people? What must you prioritize? And et cetera. It's a small little contribution that I'm doing right now. But for the next five, 10 years, it's a space that I want to start growing so effectively that by the time the government is running, they should come through some of these conversations and we can tell them exactly 
what the people are thinking in-house and in diaspora, having lived in both ends. So it's not that I'm working for ZANU-PF. I'm working with ZANU-PF, particularly on implementing the projects that they have promised the people that they will deliver. I've got a lot of intelligent Zimbabwean friends all over the world. I've got a lot of friends in Europe. I've got a lot of friends who are even Harvard graduates in the States mm. who've um, created new life for themselves and they're succeeding and they are amazing people. Mm. What is your message to those people? A man with one eye is a king amongst the blind. If you can take all your intelligence across the world and you come back to your country and you invest a third of that, the amount of money you'll make in Zimbabwe is 10 times more than you're making while you're in diaspora. There are opportunities in the country. And right now, as we are sitting right now, by the time this video out, it goes out, mm. the news will be out of a corrupt relationship between some business people and the ruling party. Uh, and I want to say something. Do not be ashamed to do business with the government because they're the biggest supplier and the biggest employer. Mm. And if any country must be serious about its politics, we need Africans, indigenous Africans, to have a priority and a lion's share in the government businesses that are happening. Mm. Be it construction, be it oil, be it, be it retail, be it banking. We need African brothers who can, like an octopus, grab the entire core of business which the government is giving out. Imagine if South African money right now is going in a black bank. Mm. Just the interest alone over 30 days. Our last black bank is, is currently being sold, by the way. U Bank. U VBS, yeah. No, so, U, U Bank in particular. It's going to African Bank, which used to be the first black bank with old Dr. Sam Utsenyan. Mm. Unfortunately, it was eventually the stories, conspiracies around how it ended up in Jewish hands. Mm. Then out of greed, the bank almost collapsed. It was taken up by the cartel. I'm calling it a cartel of the banks that we have. And then now U Bank, which was the last bank, which I think were for mining mm. uh, 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 workers. It's in Togo. It's a Togo bank, is it? U Bank. U Bank, uh, it used to the be. The headquarters is in Togo. No, I think it's here. Mm. It's a South African bank. But U now bank. it's being bought up e by African U bank. bank. E no, you, just U. U Bank. U Bank, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Right. So yeah, but it's, it's, it's quite interesting for me. And I'm, I'm happy with this conversation you're having. It sounds like you're saying Please. Nangakwa is a good president. Is a, new born, is a new dawn for Zimbabwe. I wanted to ask, and this is going to be important and quite um, funny for South Africans. Um, Ex-CEO of ESCOM, Matila Koko, is currently, has currently got a project in Zim uh, generating power. Would you suggest for South Africans, and this is now going to be the twist in the tale, not the, not the educated Zimbabweans, not other Zimbabweans, would you suggest even for South Africans, guys, there are opportunities in Zim. Come to Zim, we have land. Mm. Come farm with us. Come mine with us. Come build with us as South Africans. Mm. While you're saying there are Zimbabweans there, come join us because there are opportunities then you Vet, can make money we, we, as a South African. We, 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 and I think he has been in Zim and it could be quite interesting to... Uh, next time you come, yes. I, I, I would want to take it personally to show you the Kosa community in Zimbabwe. Yes. The, the Zulu communities that are in Zimbabwe. The Ndebele communities that are in Zimbabwe. Huge communities. Like mm. Bombembesi, Scottini. They still do the circumcision. Right as the courses are doing right here in South Africa. Word for word. This whole border story is another story for another day. But opportunities that are in Zimbabwe are immeasurable. My idea, weird as it sounds, mm. is that Sadiq region, of which South Africa is part of, mm. we need to understand... Who is good in agriculture in the Sadiq? Who has got good land? Mm. And who has got good water and rainfall? Then let's plant our food there. All of us in Sadiq. Who has got good mining? <laughs> who has got good harbor? Mm. Who has got good plantations and trees for forestry? You know? And then before you notice it, each country will attract to itself people who have the skills and the appetites of doing what is happening in that business. Mm. There are lots of South African miners right now who are languishing with their appetite for mining when you can actually buy a mine in Zimbabwe for less than 20,000 rand. Ah, Ibu. Mm. Mm. What are you saying to us now? We want to I'm, buy I'm land. I'm not joking. We want to buy Buying land. Buying mines we in Zimbabwe for 20,000 rand. I'm not joking. As virtual cook, we must own land in Zim. Not a, not a land. A mine. A mine. We can own a mine. Own a That's gold what he's mine. saying. I'll, mine. I'll, 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 when I get back to Zim, I'll organize for you a concession for a gold mine to show that I'm serious. 
you bring the papers here on the show and show them. And with the exact amount of money it will cost you <laughs> to set up a mine, a gold mine, with 200 years worth of mining in it. My business partner at Mofa is a miner, so yes. that's, uh, that sounds I will, like... Remind me, I will no, personally I'll do that. Yourself. I'll get a concession in your hands and say, here you are. Very sweet news, but I'm also not surprised. Balls back sure. down to what I was saying to you earlier. Zimbabwe is not poor, yeah. bro. I, I, went, I went to Rhodes University. <laughs> Shout out to Cecil John Rhodes. Okay. You uh, guys love Rhodes, by the way. I, 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 think, I, think, I think he's buried in Zim. He oh, loves I want, Zimbabwe. I want, Rhodes, I want Rhodes must fall. I want, to bomb, I want to bomb his grave. <laughs> it's in Zimbabwe. <laughs> yeah. Cecil John Rhodes loves are, Zimbabwe. You guys are struggling with the statue. Yes. No, we still have his grave. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do Zimbabweans not like uh, Cecil John Rhodes? Nah. My understanding was that they loved him very much. When you say they, who are they? Now? It's just what I've read from literature. This literature we are given. Uh, I mean, not, we don't love it. He was buried at our shrine in, in, uh, in uh, Matopos, which is our ancestral shrine. We used to do our worship services. And mm. there's a strong feeling right now that he must be dug up and thrown into the rivers and mm. he must go back because he desecrated our, our natural shrine. So he's no longer the sentiments of Rhodesia. We combined Zimbabwe, Malawi, and Zambia. Mm. He is actually the source of our problems, Rhodes. Okay. Yeah. Bob Mali uh, has a very famous song called Zimbabwe. He came to our independence. Mm. Can you imagine Mugabe? Straight as he was as a president, who did he invite to celebrate Come on. the independence of Zimbabwe? It was Bob Mali himself. Bob Mali was our guest artist Nesta. for the evening of our, of our independence in Zimbabwe. He saw the British flag going down, yes. and the Zimbabwean flag going up. What a prophetic moment that actually Bob Mali came here and sang from, the, from Zimbabwean land. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Boom. We are the only country maybe in the South here who can boast <laughs> that that message <laughs> arrived in person. Do, do you believe that Zimbabwe might still... Because I, I believe in the past it, it, it was a leader in intellectualism, uh, in wealth... I mean, outside of the Democratic Republic of the yeah. Congo, do you believe that Zimbabwe uh, uh, might, might be the future uh, 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 of, of the African continent? Yes. I call We need rains. Yes. The rain will always go where it traveled before. before. Mm. Wisdom is like that. And countries are like that. Mm. Leaders will come and go, but the land will remain and its history will not be obliterated. The fact that Zimbabwe right now has put the coin out. Did you notice the South African government, Reserve Bank, is now playing around the issue of the coin also? <laughs> they have theirs. That is, they have theirs They're following the leader. They have 180. Thousand worth of a coin that yes. they are bringing to start up now. Is oh wow, 180 <laughs> hours is just a thousand. It's, it's 18,000. Mm. But imagine the, the, the thought leading pattern mm. which we are having. And this for me, this is a sad thing for South Africa because you guys should have taken the worst of the errors that the rest of the African countries had done from Kwame Nkrumah mm. to Kaunda to, to Nyerere mm. to Mashero. By the time we go to Mandela, you guys should have known that the white men don't change. <laughs> you should have seen the tradition going up north and how all of the countries of the north were failing states and what is it that had caused them to fail. Mm. Now you come around here, you just change the leaders. You don't change the system. They got democracy or they yeah. got freedom way before us as and a nation. And you did not go to war to fight for democracy. Yeah. You went to fight for land and its resources. Now you come around, all of a sudden coming from the day, ah, we got our democracy back. You can vote. We never lost it. <laughs> We never lost it. We never, we never lost democracy. We never fought for democracy. We never wanted it. What we wanted was land. Traditional leadership. That's us. Reinstituting and redistributing our resources back to the people. How can you say you are having your land on my land? And my grandfather's grave is still on that land. And you say it does not belong to me. Mm. Because if a piece of paper called title deeds mm. that the government is telling you and the legal system protects you from me. So you, you, you as South Africans, I'm sorry to say, you're the weakest link. We're also the youngest. In our, in our defense, we're also the youngest. I, I, I want we're also you, the youngest. I want to push it to you. You're the yes. weakest link. Yes. You are weak in that. You did not learn. <coughs> do you not, do you not the, think... The examples of the rest of Africa, that this thing, when you fight for democracy and you negotiate for it, you never get it. 
you and know, if democracy is the best way of governance, then why did we have to fight for it in the first place? Do you, do you not who, think... In whose courts, using mm, whose laws? Do you not think it's also because, unlike about Julius Narere, Nabo, Kwame Nkrumah, South Africa may have gotten the least amount of power. We are the most the, sold as, the, as, as black leadership, but we probably got the least amount of power compared to these other countries that have that had a greater influence on the affairs of their land. All we ever got was the right to vote. Yeah, and and, and then, then we were sold and, and because and we were South Africa. And a few poems. <laughs> and some poems. <laughs> no, well, but without being, without being derogative, you cannot, you cannot change drivers when the car has no wheels mm. and you expect to start the journey. Mm. What we are discussing here is so critical that until the African child understands that the vehicle we have called democracy in an African hand, mm. it is simply an immobile vehicle. I've got three last questions And for we myself. expect these leaders to take us somewhere. Mm. And, and a, car with no wheels. a new leader comes after elections and sits in parliament and says, okay, deliver. <laughs> On what you said, you can deliver. Mm. No, he must sit in parliament. He must still get approval. He must see the parliamentary thing. He must see the subcommittee. He must what, what, what. Four or five years later, we are still discussing when are we going to deliver the thing. Because even the midst of democracy, in terms of its office, mm. does not give you power as the president to implement anything without the power of your parliament. So what are you doing? We put you on a hamstring. We put you on a leash. Mm. Then we sit you in a parliament, and then we start pulling you from backwards. Mm. What do you deliver? Tell me what one president has done. Hence, I believe in dictators. Where he make a decision as a leader. Kagame. Hate him or love him. <laughs> and I don't like him 100%. I don't hate him 5%. But hell no. When a man is given power to do certain things and implement them. Look at Russia. Wakes up in the morning, I'm not going to sell my oil. <laughs> Bugger you all. My diesel stays. Look at China. Power is embedded in people who can make decisions as leaders and implement them. They've never heard of elections in the UEA. Hmm. But how oh, are they not doing well? So who told you that democracy is the only model of, of success? We are the most successful countries in the world. Don't we have democracy. Not even, not even have, when did last year of elections in Norway? <laughs> or Sweden? Let me ask you. <laughs> when were the elections in Sweden announced anywhere? That mm. there are elections in Sweden. Mm. In the Scandinavian countries. Oh, fuck all. Nothing happens there. But yet, they are closing their prisons. Turning them into factories. There's no one to arrest. Because mm. all the oil they're digging out... Every member wakes up in the morning as a shareholder of the oil of the country. Something in the UEA. So why can't we emulate some of this? When I'm saying South Africa weakest link, you are supposed to toothpick all these models and say, by the time we come up with our system, mm. a Mandela system, what do we do with our gold, with our diamonds, with our fisheries, with our resources? Mm. If we have 42 million Africans in South Africa mm. and our resources are worth 17 trillion, what is the value of each South African. What's the value of one South African? Mm. So when each South African is born, whether they go to school or not, they are worth so much. That's, just, that's the UAE. Mm. Now, unfortunately, South Africans have no value. Mm. Zimbabwean people have no value. No, he must have a drink. In conclusion, African people have no value because our leaders have not consolidated our resources from land to grass to water to mineral to fish to trees to air to everything and give me a figure there and divide it by the number of 1.3 billion people. That's the value of every African child. Now, if we knew that, if we knew that, then we would know how much to spend on each African. Whether they are educated or not, their value does not depreciate. And for me, that's a painful part. By the time we're talking about these health things and migration and what and what, what is the value of that Zimbabwean woman that you swear at and kiss and chase away from the hospital? Mm. If I tell you that Zimbabwe is worth so much, but this woman cannot access even a penny of the value of what they are worth, then what is politics for, except an inhibiting factor mm. to people's true potential? My other question, again, which is a follow-up to what we had said earlier. When I say to you, uh, or when I say, 
according to me, Zimbabwe is not poor. Zimbabwe is very, very wealthy. Is there still a reason for Zimbabweans to still come into countries like South Africa? Going to UK, going to Europe, going yeah. to America, the, or getting educated there and staying there with their skills? The, the, the secret of success is in the ability of the few that have that is beginning to see the vision, to be able to capture the vision and capture those markets, critical markets. We can almost say right now, I can say so confidently, because I'm working in that space now, that all our oil and petrol supply in the country, it is now purely in the hands of black people. Mm. BP and Shell and Caltex, during the sanctions, they closed down because they wanted Mugabe to be chased away. Yes. So one black man took the opportunity and walked into the oil space. He now owns the entire oil of the country, including the pipeline from Zimbabwe to, uh, to Mozambique. Mm. It's now in black hands. And people are saying it's corrupt, corruption. corruption. Oh, Mozambique is corruption. another wealthy nation. Okay. They're talking about Jeez. corruption, 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 because now an African man is holding there. But I was saying, imagine if the same attitude could begin to flow across the entire retail space. Industries. The entire manufacturing space. There's no corruption here, because politics is a prostitute of business. So until we have money hmm. in business to buy our politicians, you can never have free and effective politics. We in South Africa right now, we are a mess. Please repeat that. Until we have money, we have money to, to buy the politicians. You can uh, never have. Oh, yes, opinion. Uti politics, Uti Uti politics is the prostitute of yeah. business. I, politics. So, politics is of chaveli tunsele. If you have the money, you have the money. Do you have the money? And in South Africa, mm. and, and in South Africa, Nina ma change South Africa. No, you did. Nina in South Africa, you are still talking about your economy and economy. But I can tell you upfront right now, the day I will know that South Africans are serious, is when elections are coming, and five to six, seven black African leaders can put together 200 million and put it on a leader of your choice to run the government. And, then push, I, and then push I for know. policies. Then I know you're in business. Because well, that's how America runs. The lobbyists. But you but, buy a politician. They're worth the price. You buy them. I just want to mention this quickly since we speak yeah, about that. Yeah. Uh, Capitec, which has 90% black uh, account owners, clients. The owner is uh, Mikhail Leroux. Uh, he's the biggest funder of political parties. He's funded 15 million rand to the DA. The second biggest is Patrice Mutipe, 10 million rand to, to the ANC. He's patronized by blacks. But which part, political party is he funding? The DA. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm touching on this just so people that can But he's not only funding the DA. No, he's not only funding yeah. the DA. But the no, Patrice is not only funding the ANC as well. So, but yeah. I'm fully screaming the matter of Patrice. It's money. Politics is an expensive business. It was almost like two billion run in Nazareth here. It's, it's genuine money. What you are reporting on the top side is less. The, it's real money that, <laughs> that, that needs to be spoken about. Akichi Mayo, La Two billion. How is wrong? I lend you two billion. Akichi Mayo, I'm Please carry on. Sorry, sorry. So, so we, we need to, to, to patronize the, the critical components of business and create a wealth base. Then we can work with that money and literally buy the politicians that we want. And we lobby the politics that we want. And manipulate the policies that we want to favor us as black people. If we're still going to play within this system. If we're going to play within for this now. system. For now. We need to corrupt it. For now. We need to corrupt it. I'm not mixing my words. That's the only time I support corruption. We need to corrupt the political system with an agenda that is Afrocentric. But what if the people that are the Jacob Zuma presidency was... Um, helping to emerge who they were getting business and making money. What if that's what they were doing? And they were called corrupt. Of course, to this day, we have an entire one billion rand commission. We're not, we're not, well, we are an intelligent young man. Can you tell me and give me the contract and the tender process of N1? Can you give me a tender process of University of Johannesburg? Give me a tender process of N3, N11. When these roads were being built and these hospitals were being built, mm. who was tendering? Which business was running? Was those these Africaners? Who built who build all these structures? These structures? Mm. Were you there? The fellow apartheid government, which you can glorify, was corrupt to the core. If you mean corruption, was them Pretorius using Mr. Fairfoot 
for food using Mr. Luru, Luru using Mr. Who, and the cousin of my brother, of my what? It's only now that we are also aware of what's happening on the tendering process mm. that we are beginning to talk. But the same government inherited corruption. As late as 20, 2012, 2013, your printing was still being done by a colonial company that was contracted to the government, the, the, the South African papers, then Pretoria Street. That contract was approved years ago to date. Your gazettes, your what, your Government magazines. printing works. I know Government them. Printing works. Pretoria White boys <laughs> who got this contract <laughs> during... I know them. I know you're speaking about. You know I'm talking about? Yes. And you're talking about in 1994, we brought independence and the people are still printing your own... So it, 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 we need to understand... Corruption it needs three things. Corruption is the venue. There's something called the corruptor and something called the corruptee. The corruptee is the one who receives a morsel of the value of the contract. Mm. The corruptor is the one who has the full share of the corrupt activity. Corruption is just a venue, a venue to where to this is happening. So when you look at the government, it's corrupt. It's corrupt. You're not sure. Who is corrupt? Mm. Who is the corrupter? The banks are the corruptors. They have the money. If the bill is, deal is worth 10 million, corruption will not give you 10 million. Mm. It will give you 200,000. That was corruption. I meant to took 200,000. You never ask what happened to 980,000. <laughs> what happened to what happened to 98 million? What happened mm. to the bigger figure? We only see 200,000 missing here. Mm. Can you give us the, we don't talk about that at that at that level. And Africans, we are more worried about who was caught with 10 rand in their pocket. Mm. We are not worried about who remained with a thousand bucks in their hand. I've talk got, about corruption, Yabo? I've got three more questions from my side, uh, and I'm done. The first one wow, is... we can't be done. We can't be done. I mean, I cancelled my whole day for this man today. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have to go on. Just, we can keep going. Uh, until, until he stops. Okay. okay, let me let me start. Until with he these, says, "Guys, I have to go." Let me start yeah, with three let's three go questions. In. Let's go in, bro. What, what is your current view on on borders? They currently exist. A lot of South Africans, and this is going to be a very key point leading up to the twenty twenty four elections. Mm. We are aware of it. Mm. What is your thoughts on on borders and immigration, not just for Zimbabweans, but for everyone, and also for the African continent? Because South Africans are also not just allowed to just step into any country and say, "But this is Africa." That's the first one. The sake, the the way one, one, focus, I can yeah. remind you. I can remind you. Let, let, let's start with the, the border one. Let's start with the border Traditional one. leaders, and then the last one is how we get involved with what you're doing with the, with the media in Zim. Uh, so number the one, the, the border story. In my visit to Namibia, I had an opportunity of meeting uh, President uh, Genkop. Hagi. Uh, uh, Hagi himself. Hagi. So I and I had some beautiful, beautiful meeting together. And our conversation was uh, around the, the Himba people and the Khoisang people, the, uh, and how the independent governments, democratic governments, are actually infringing and impinging on the freedom and movement of the indigenous people. Mm. Bearing in mind that the Himbas and the uh, Khoisang and the Bushmen are moving between Botswana, uh, Namibia, and parts of Zambia, and even Angola, and etc. And, and, and they, they have been living in this region mm. for the longest of time. Now comes the border where they just took a ruler on a map mm. and they drew past <laughs> <laughs> your home <laughs> on top of your house. <laughs> Among the passage traveling to your friends, like Valley, you my suiting if he is what I'm Yeah, yeah. So, so um, and, and, and it might sound as sarcastic as it might sound. This is actually the reality. Mm. Where you find, like in Namibia, if you look at the map, there's, there's a straight line, <laughs> like from the from the bottom north is not. I've seen that map. It's a yeah. straight line. Yeah, it's, a straight it's ridiculous. And you ask yourself, it's definitely a in, li in real life, will this line There's not no straight line? Will this line not cross over families, estates, <laughs> and, and homes? Water. And imagine the day the line was put where were the cattle and the goats? You know. <laughs> <laughs> it is a straight and line. It's, it's it's humorous to look at the arrogance of the colonial system mm. putting lines on us. And I cannot answer you better, but just introduce you to myself. Mm. That my grandmother, who bets is my father, is a Tsonga from the Tembes, right in Mozambique, in Tete, and uh, Mshangan. Mm. Mshangan, Mshangan, mm. My grandmother, who bets my mother, is a uh, from the Venda tribes. Mm. And my grandfather, who bets my mother, who came up with the Mziligas up north. Mm. 
And my grandfather who births my father is a Mkaranga, Sean, for the gen. So I'm a United Nations mm. of the four major, major nations in the South. That is South, South Africa, that is uh, Zimbabwe, mm. and that is Mozambique coming together. You are so Shanguve personified. So when you begin to talk about borders, mm. honestly, what worries some of you who are hybrid Zulus, hybrid Tsonas, who can only have one identity in your mind? Your mm. problems are not my problem. Because I have not even started to look at myself in that fashion. Mm. When I see a Shangani person, a Tsonga person, I actually address them as my grandfathers and grandmothers. Mm. When I see vendor people, I do the same. When I see Ndebele people and Zulus, I do the same. Mm. When I see Shona people, so I don't understand you asking me about borders. So you need, maybe you need to tell me first, how many passports do I need to visit my grandmother in Mozambique, mm. my grandmother in Venda, my grandfather in KwaZulu, mm. and my father in Zimbabwe. It's a nuisance of the highest order. Mm. So the, the, the borders must be discussed in their political sense. But in an Afrocentric cultural space, mm. I think they are totally misplaced because they break away the norms. If you are a Sibanda in Zambia, in, Zamb in, Z in Zimbabwe, you are a Banda in Malawi, you are in Sibande in, in South Africa, mm. you are a Mtaung in the Sutus, you are a Tau further down, mm. you are Mgonyama, Kwakosa, you are the same lion. Mm. If you are a Njofu in, 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 in KwaZulu Natal, Ngukacheni, Uri Shou on the other, other side, if you are a Shoko like I am, you are a Piri in Malawi, you are a Kabo in, here in the south, you are a Tsueneng in the thing, you are a Jamba, Selisa, a Ushati, a Makosen, Mtolo, Ufagudze, a Swazini, the same monkey. So when you begin to talk about borders and you find that the Mtaung is killing a Shumba from Zimbabwe, mm. and the lion is killing a lion, a Banda is being killed by Ntsivande, mm. <laughs> you know, Mtaung, Mtsueneng is killing a Shoko Mukanya, this is for me our lack of understanding of our ethnographical, totemic understanding of a cultural connection between tribes. is actually the breeding ground of xenophobia. By the time we begin to know who we are, we're not from Yamlo Chowen. Yes, Kosan. My brother. I am Nube, you're right. In Zimbabwe, I'm Nube. I'm Nube. Yes. In Zimbabwe. So he was Kosan in the village space. So I appear in Malawi. So there you go. You are in Tweneng in Lesotho. You are a Jamba, so you are Lisa in Coastland. Mm. So which part of that needs a passport? How do we how do we get this now to the people on the ground? Because like I said, we are already doing it's it. It's a big Don't thing now. Mm. We are already doing it right here on this platform. Mm. It's making sense. Some Decolonize the mind. Understand mm. your history. You may understand the politics, mm. and you may end up actually having a curse by having the blood of your brother in your hands. It's not worth your time. Understand. Let's understand ourselves as a continent, particularly the sub-region. You'll be shocked. Where's South Africa? Mm. Because of migration and labor and mines. It's a pity. It is a pity. It's a pity. Because we don't know history. You're very it's right. It's a pity. Otherwise, we'll a, a lot of we, A lot of black South Africans are xenophobic, have, but they have family lineage in other nations. We won't have, nations the, we won't have Yuma Segela here. Mm. We won't have Dorothy Masuka here. We won't have Ray Piri here. Can I go? <laughs> Oskiro. Oskido. DJ Fresh. He does a homecoming every year on the 31st in Zimbabwe. Yeah. To remind everybody that he comes from Zimbabwe. He came from Zimbabwe from nothing. Yeah. He used to sleep in nightclubs in Hillborough back mm. in the days of Razmataz. He built himself up with nothing. Mm. He came as an immigrant, a legal immigrant. Yes. And he built a life. He changed so many lives. To the stage. Musicians that we love. Whether you're talking Boom Shaka, you're talking Bongo Muffin, mm -hmm. you're talking Mafigi Zolo, mm -hmm. you're talking Black Motion, mm -hmm. you're talking including Black Coffee, yeah. including DJ Tira, including TS Records, our company, myself. Yeah. The contribution that the man has had in the youth culture in South Africa and those youths have grown up to become iconic figures mm -hmm. in the culture in South Africa and they employ thousands of people and they inspire millions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... <laughs> you can't just write that off and mm -hmm. you go to the other side and you say, hey, DJ Fresh. Mm. Some people probably on my 2000 don't know that Fresh is actually from Botswana. Botswana. Yeah. He's from Botswana. Mm. He came in as a legal immigrant from Botswana. Mm. Built a life here from nothing as a young man who just loved music. I'm one of the people he's impacted as well. Been a part of his radio show coming up as a come up. I used to judge DJ competitions. 
I saw him put on Proverb yeah. from Idols. Yeah. One of the biggest figures in South African culture right now yeah. through Idols. And Proverb is passing it on. You know when Damon Dash talks about that family tree? Yeah. It's a family tree. Um, um, these are people that I saw fresh change their lives. Mm. I remember, this is back in the day, this is me, first said, come through. Mm. Who are you, young man? Where are you from? You're from Tambisa. Or oh, you're from Tambisa, my man. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's, a big on dog. Table. it's very important for us to touch on these things mm. and, 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 and simplify mm. them. And Abu Tepo, Abu Tepo, Abu Tepo. We've been in London, my man, so rest in peace. Amen. Is this Connie, South African? That was married to Shona Ferguson? Yeah. Was this Connie, South African? Shona mm. Ferguson was not. I don't know. Okay. May so rest in peace, bro. Shona, rest in peace, bro. Oh, Shona. Sure. One of my inspirations, you but know. One, in, of in both, case, I'm one, one of both of them, I think, were from Botswana. I'd never met to Upra Shona. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? I'd never met to Upra Shona. Number two, rest in peace, Makesh. One of my favorite, actually my favorite Kwaito artists of all time. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is him and then Kabel. Mm -hmm. Top two on my list of Kwaito tight, tight. of all time. Sadly, I mean, I've had this amazing career. I've interviewed thousands of people in my yeah. entire life since back in the day. I've never had a chance to interview my favorite Kwaito artist, Makesh, and he cool. passed. But we're working on it. We're working to oh. put it together. Mm. But anyway, let's go back to that issue of uh, DJ and, Fresh. And what, and what, what you're mentioning, what makes it so nice, is that in, in the space where there's openness and frankness and doors of learning are open, look at the beauty of influence as young people are influencing each other. With, with, really? with no qualms, with no agendas we know nothing mm. and it's the same thing that happens in other industries i've just i've just pointed out two examples in the mm. entertainment in entertainment business. and i imagine all these other industries it's crazy those that are not on camera mm. the incredible work they're doing in mentoring younger south africans who come in maybe even in government mm. let me share something the collapse of the Zimbabwean government during the mugabe regime and the transition into the mnangagwa second republic saw an exodus of public servants engineers, doctors, who are right now, as we speak, occupy your middle and upper management within the gov total government infrastructure, be it hospitals, be it roads, be it IT, be it etc. Remember, when you came back from independent, for independence as South Africans, mm. you did not have the brain power. You guys were busy in, in the barracks. Mm. As black people, we didn't have a black, a black... But the, 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 the mindset that was needed in terms of running your government, it's, it would be interesting for you if you had time. Mm. Just go through a research in some of the infrastructures and business and government departments. You'll be shocked that your permanent secretaries, deputy directors, and etc. they are all Zimbabweans. Mm. Not in a bad way, but we brought with us the gift also that we had started off this journey earlier on. We now had the skills mm. of employment. If right now I put an advert for a job right now, and you, you can see how many, a, a, a serious qualification. And you ask for CVs. And if you are looking for experience and you're looking for qualifications, mm. you can tell me by percentage how many of them will be Zimbabweans, how many will be South Africans, and which one will you choose if you are really looking at that. So let's not look at that as a disadvantage, but an advantage in the time for us to share our experience and grow together. So mm. what, what happened, sorry to disturb, I know the conversation continues. Go for We've it. been maybe an hour into this interview. What happened when you got here and I told you that I wear South African brands <coughs> every day? And I did say that even, these are called kicks, these are South African brands, this is South, I wear South African brands every, well, I wear local every day. Mm. So what I, what I want to say to you, what did we talk about? We, t we spoke about E, but we want to Yes. And he said, he, he want, you want size? Size 10. When, when you said that this an hour ago, uh. what happened when you said that? I said, I'm going to start putting on the South African brand. And I'm going to take away, I'm, I can mention the name, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> I spent good money for them. <laughs> I, I, I got some Bukati takeies here. I'm going to take away these Bukatis yeah, and I'm yeah. going to start putting on South African brand. So let's see them. Bring them oh, on. And, and all, all, what I want to say is what happened? What did I do afterwards? You made a, you, phone, call. Made a, phone, you made call. a phone call to Uthi Obaloi of Ipato and you're like, say we're sitting here with uh, Umaponga J. Uh, he wants to push proudly South African. He wants to represent what we're doing. And Uthi immediately said, uh, without a doubt, Buddha, uh, we're going to make it happen. Why am I putting this on camera? I want people to understand why Theo and Batu are successful. And I want people to understand wow. when we are saying the standard of South African businesses, whether we're in agriculture, whether we're in education, whether we are scholars, whether we are politicians, retail, yeah. whether we are entertainers, 
we have to perform at the highest level. Highest level. When somebody calls, not, not they're calling because it's DJs, but somebody might say, yeah, because it's you who, who called Theo. But come on, guys, an hour. They can order online and see. An hour. They can order and online said, and see. And I said, I'm going to pay for it. Yeah. I said, he's my guest. And then look how many pairs he brought. Oh, the professionalism of the company called Batu. Jesus Christ. Come on, come here. Bring, come bring, here. Let, let them bring it. Let them bring it. Let, let them bring it. Let, let him camera. come too. Yeah. This is what we're talking about when we're saying we need to transform. We're changing the game. Here. World class. Like world if you class. can build yourself to become world class. Let him come on camera. Come speak on behalf of What's Ubat. best? To come? That yeah, way. yeah. Oh, let them on. come. We'll share the mics yeah, one by one. Yeah. I want people to understand the level. The standard is high, guys. We can't drop the ball. We have to operate in excellence. In excellence. The other day, I saw the president wearing Ipad. Yes. President who? Cyril Ramaphosa. Uh-uh. Yes. Yeah. There's a campaign with... Uh, I made a call an hour ago. You're getting your three pairs now, not even one pair. Oh, guys, that's, well, why, that's why oh, yeah, this how they the this is Welcome to the virtual This is how they operate. Oi! This is how they operate. Speak to the people. Tell, tell the people about Penny this. Can you speak to them? Sure. So this is our latest... Please come closer to the mic. Guys, welcome to the virtual Nkuku and thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. On behalf of Wipa, to purchase Nani yourselves, we appreciate you. Mm, thank, thank you for welcoming us. Sure. Thank Please, you. can you introduce yourselves and what's happening? Uh, I'm Tabang. Oh, you're fine. I work for Batu. Hi, mic. Tabang. Yes. I'm Tabang, I work for Batu. And this is uh, my co-worker, Samke. She's also um, part of our uh, our team at Batu. Yeah. So this is our latest uh, shoe, which is the Sky Edition. Jeez. And the color is Sky Orange. Right? So yeah, Batu is actually a very comfortable, comfortable shoe. penuel has got this Thank blue so one. Much. Mm-hmm. Ju- Justice has got, to Theo. has got a white one. I also have a white one. Shout out to oh. Theo. And Thank we're giving you. you more. We're giving you more. The more the merrier. <laughs> <laughs> the more the merrier. Tell us about the other one. So the other one is a Sky Red. It's a Sky Red edition. So yeah. We have uh, about eight colorways. They come in Lotus, Lotus which is the orange which, with a touch of uh, purple. It comes with red, it comes in white, a blue and a grand black. Jeez, thank and you so a, much. a full black. Yeah. Sabon, you are a presenter here on the wrist as well? It's, it's, it's a long story. It's a long okay. story. But yeah. you go, you're going through a journey? I'm going through a journey. You see, he's thank going so through much. his own journey, what we're thank saying so earlier. Much. Sure. Journey of re- redefining. Beautiful. Whatever. Thank you, bro. Shala. Yeah. Yeah. And then the third one? The third one is the sky light blue. This is uh, one of our colorways that we have at Batu. You're being spoiled. Oh, here's the fourth one. This is the magic. Here's the fourth one. This is the magic. And the white one, tell us. This is uh, the sky white one. So this is uh, Theo's. This is Theo's favorite, actually. Yeah, this yeah. is my favorite. This also, is this just favorite. Favorite. He's wearing that actually even today. <laughs> okay, let, yeah. me, let me say something. Let me say something to the people here. Before before the king speaks, let him go out. Please, some gay. Saying farewell to Women's Month. Please, yeah. some gay. <laughs> <laughs> saying goodbye to Women's Month as well. Happy spring. It continues, yeah, but it's Women's Month every day. Of course. Yeah, oh yes, I'm Samke, Samke Zwari. I work at Batu. And yeah, the shoes, you, you see guys, the shoes are so uh, comfortable, nice, and you can wear them with any outfit you, you, you want to wear them. And yeah. In your meetings, guys, is there something that you guys discuss and say, excellence number one? Because this is what, this is what I've always experienced with Upat, mm-hmm. from when Theo used to do these deliveries on his own, from Massive Metro days, mm-hmm. in his small car, Ahamba no Endro. Mm-hmm. Till today, it's still the same. I give a call an hour later, it's there. Mm. Yeah. The excellence part as the company has grown. I mean, how do you guys do that? I mean, it's effortless. It's, it's effortless. It's effortless. Let them bogot us. Excellence is, <laughs> is what defines part two, actually. Yeah. 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 Is this yes. something that you guys have in yourselves? Is it something you're trained for at part two? Because you guys are like at the uppest, at the highest levels of, of world class. I think cause, because uh, Theo wants, he's, he's a perfectionist. Mm. Us as well, we need to like follow his ways as well. Yeah. So we always make sure that we represent him e- everywhere we go. Sure. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for gracing us. Cheese. Yeah. Very proud of you guys. Sure. Congratulations, thank man. Thank you so much. And I hope that what you're learning from Theo, you guys will apply in your own companies yeah. in the future, you know? Thank you, thank you so much. From, from my side, guys, happy African New Year. It's African New Year. Yeah. We're in spring. It's, an, it's the rebirth of the continent and our country. Yeah. I hope you guys will be blessed. We're looking forward to seeing you guys again. 
and thank you so much for these gifts. Yeah. Let me say we appreciate and the response from the from the let recipient let me say something from first, from firstly, Zimbabwe. Firstly, uh, this, brand, this brand is way out of my reach. <laughs> you know, this is hip. This is neon. This is uh, hot, I should say. Mm. And uh, in as much as I was moving more into my traditional clothes. And this is traditional. Stuff. I will use. <laughs> not use. I will use. I will use this mm. Yeah. Mm. for for a good cause mm. that they are coming out from black hands mm. and they are coming out to replace yes. the appetites that are colonial and etc. Yeah. The workmanship is exquisite. Mm. The color is, is, is flamboyant, <laughs> and <laughs> even for the sake of putting money back into black hands, mm. yeah. it is worth an investment. And we want to appreciate the brilliant, brilliant work that you're doing. And I would want to make a challenge that uh, consider Zimbabwe as your next bus stop. I think DJ Sbu and... <laughs> it, would be, it would be nice too. So you guys, don't be jealous now and ask me, I'm going to pull off this with my suit, <laughs> with my African stuff. Don't say I'm not matching. This is some damn good expensive stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Batu. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Wow. Got myself some. I don't even know. I mean, I wish I, I wish I, I could change three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, please travel safe. Thank you so Thank much. So and much please Henry. send our thanks wow. uh, to Theo, to the rest of the team. And you, and may you guys be a blessing wow. just yourselves and the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. We love you guys, man. Part of history, guys. Thank you so much. You, we love you and thank you for the gesture and your time. Oh, word. Bless. Look at that. Look at that, Jesus. Look at that. This is beautiful. This is what we mean, Joshua. I mean, I have one pair of takeys in my wardrobe. So now, now, now I don't know which <laughs> one. Six Zamil, a shame. Now I don't know which one to put on now. Ponga J. This is, this is you. You advocate for this. No, man. It's, and, yeah. and it's very important because this is an iconic interview. Yeah. This interview is going to go on for many... It's going to be one of our biggest interviews. Yeah. Uh, I don't care about numbers. I'm yeah. just saying... In, in, in terms in, of impact. Yeah, impact and what yeah. we represent, right? But I love the example of what wow. we're talking about. It just got displayed in the middle, in the middle of the interview. This is beautiful, mm. bro. Jeez. Wow. And this is what we want in all industries. Black people performing in, on the highest form of excellence, level end. of excellence. High end. Yes, I, I had questions. Now I'm just, my, my mind is thinking. We speak about Zimbabwean education and the, and the level of intellect and experience that they brought. I think of the fact that uh, black South Africans are being robbed of an ability to create because of some of the structures that we have of social welfare, which are not about empowerment, but they're more about just dumbing you down. Mm. Give you a 350 so that you don't think we give you a house so that you don't build your own house. I mean, part of the and reason who say, why... Who says I want a one-bedroom house? Or a two-bedroom house? Part of the why reason do you I, build a house for me as if I can't build one for myself? Part of the reason I believe that South Africans so easily burn down libraries and other infrastructure in their neighborhoods is because they're not given a chance to build them themselves. Go to a Tembisa, go to a Matatin and say, guys, here's a budget for a hospital, but we, we want you guys to build it. Those people would never burn that down. And for me, that speaks to dignity. And then to what we're doing now and what we're seeing now and in the rebirth, we need more young people striving to be world-class. Whether they are entertainers, whether they are actors, whether they are creating sneaker brands. It's, it's Theo today, Patuli Kao is another brother of ours doing amazing work with Trip. Um, whether it's in business, mining. Shout out to the Afeni Black guys. Sure, in, in, Afeni in, in Black. In the Northern Cape. Sure. You linked me to them. Sure. They, said, they sent us sneakers as well. Great, great shoes. Yeah. Shout out to Kicks. These are Kicks. And there's well. another young man also, that guy we were with, Putti. Yeah. He's, he has come up with Lieto. From Limpopo. He has come up with another tech. He also got Lieto. Yes, sir. Very nice. And there's another yeah. one called Bomme also from Limpopo. Sorry, sure. finish your point. No, it, it needs to be that we become world class and, and we, we compete healthily and we learn from each other. We invest in, in each other's businesses. Uh, Umaponga spoke about how we need to get closer to government business. We mustn't run away from it just because it's our matenda premier. We need to get closer because if, if you're not going to be doing it, who will be? Become world class and move into some of they're those the biggest, spaces. They're the biggest traders. Politics. They're the biggest yes. traders in the country. Yes. From the entertainment side of things in South Africa, Tibor Touch said the same in our interview at yeah. the farm. He said, I'm going back to the SABC as a form of service to my country. Yes. yes, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm doing well on my own, but I kind of felt when duty called, I raised my hand and let me go I'm, serve I'm, my country. Without being pompous, I, I had an opportunity of, of staying here 
in South Africa. Yeah. And retire here comfortably. Once in a while, do a presentation here and there. But sit in my palace there, <laughs> do my music. <laughs> I've been in that and palace. And see my kids grow, yeah. etc. But then I look back home and I say, what is the use of me enjoying so much to myself? When my own people and the country where I'm of birth is languishing. Mm. Why can I take a bit of, I mean, I did a Bishop as a program. I did Abba Fundis. I did the Joshua Show. I've, I've been creating content, both online, offline, TV, and et cetera. And then I look at it, I go back home and I watch my smoke and TV and radio and I feel, man. This is answering my question. Man, there's something that can be done here, man. And, and, I, and I go back and unfortunately when you get back there, the red tape and the bureaucracy and the obsession with tradition, it's, it's off the ceiling. You tell me, hey, man, this thing, no, 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 it's not working, man. Let's, let's create new content. But it's unfortunate. Even when you want to help people, you still stand being jeered at, being laughed at, being stereotyped, being marginalized, being excluded. But you don't stop giving to your people because they're not appreciating you. I have a principle by now, DJ Subu. This one is a hashtag. I am qualified to work for the unthankful. Hmm. Ah, you have a penuel. Because the ungali layer. Hey, I, and I, I still do. Mm. Till today, he stands on his point. He says, I, I am mm. qualified to work for the unthankful. So you don't need to say thank you. I'll do what I must do. Because my reward is that I have done something mm. for my people. Whether I get feedback, I get gratitude, it must be a bonus. But it's not the reason <laughs> to mm. do something that is right because you want to be thanked for it. Then you're shortchanging yourself. Why Yeah, this is a long one. But I wanna hear his I, I'm, go, I'm gonna answer you. Why he gave up on us? I'm gonna answer you. I'm gonna answer you. What work I, what media work what are you trying to build in Zim? How do we try and get involved? Uh, brilliant Zimbabwean dollar How do we try and get involved? brilliant Zimbabwean dollar billionaire, Strive Masiwa. Uh, has built an amazing business and part of it was in media. Quest Sports at some point, which was here in Bryanston in South Africa. Yeah. He's got international businesses. He's built media. Mm. He's gone into tech. I think Eco EcoNet, EcoCash and Zim. Are you trying to build an SAPC multi-choice in Zim? Are you trying to do something else that just promotes positivity? And how do we as, forget South Africans, how do we as African brothers of yours uh, get involved answers, in the work you're doing. Answers, why are you running away from the question? I'm going to answer your question. Oh, okay, cool. It's because you are speaking about media. Oh, so I just okay, want him to finish. Okay, finish. I, I, okay, I, I, I was going to throw in um, uh, a curveball. Again, this space of media I'm looking at is not the mainstream media. I was looking at it from the social media space mm. where I wanted to create, I've created a platform called Before and After, which is just about to be complete in terms of websites and everything else. Yeah. So everyone who's got a who's got an iPhone, or has got an Android phone, the three, four, five million people in the country, everyone who's got a phone in their hands. All I want you to do is to, around the African continent, mm. anyone, when I'm saying 2.5 million, so I'm talking about Zimbabwe, but around the African continent, anyone on the continent, when you see something good happening in your place where mm. you are, just capture that. And let's share a 24-hour channel then what they do, can do in the office is now to classify them. The agriculture ones, the sports one, mm. the culture one, the dances one, the fashion ones. The, the, but it, but that will become the back, the back office. But I want to create a hub where we can simply harvest stories as they happen. Because you cannot wait for news at 8. Mm. While you're waiting for news at 8, there were 300 people who were on site. So why wait for 8 o'clock in the evening when news can be reported live as it is happening? Mm. It gives even the reporting of the news multiple faces the honesty that we need <coughs> for the event so that you don't have to wait only for the SABC, yes. ZBC lens. And here is news according to Ruben Barwe or mm. according to Mfuyo <laughs> Mfoko. It's only what he saw yes. with what his camera saw. Yes. But I bet you even if when a goal is scored in the stadium and you can allow 3,000 people in that stadium, each one to take a picture, how many angles <laughs> yeah. of that ball will you see? And, and, and I think our reporting is lacking. And, and also, I think he who pays the bills controls the narrative. Mm. So our, our reporting is lacking that diversity. So I want to create an environment in Zim, firstly for the Zimbabwean community, yes. but ultimately I'm seeing this becoming a big African archive where at the press of a button, I can see what is happening in Sudan, 
what is happening in Angola. Mm. And all of us as African children can begin to have a community where even what is happening here, he could have been taking a picture of us and say, these guys are interviewing. Something is happening in Kenya. Something is happening in mm. Djibouti. And just for people... And because remember, apartheid worked very hard to make sure that South Africa was not in touch with the rest of Africa. Yes. So you would only see news of what's happening in the country. Yes. Even what was happening in Lesotho or Swaziland. But now in the free space that we are in, mm. I think it's worth a while to say, how do we take the hustlers corner into Kenya? Who are the hustlers there? Mm. Who are the hustlers in Nigeria, in Ike, in Ike, Ike, Ikeja, mm. or in Abuja? Who can we link up with there? We don't need to get to where you are. Just put a camera and et cetera, sit in a room, bring a few business people. Let's have a live interaction as to what products do you have there, what products do you have. Before you notice it, this stuff could be in Nigeria by tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what is yeah. in Nigeria? It will, it will be because what, of this what episode. Is in, yeah. What is in Nigeria? It will be by tomorrow because yeah. of this episode. Yeah. And what is in Nigeria? I'm going to be here by tomorrow morning. Yeah. It can over overnight flight. So it, for me, it begins to create a business environment, a community mm. of knowledge sharing. And in the midst of that, there's lots of business interactions and information that could be spread across the borders. Like right now, you, you, you may not need to buy uh, X from X. You're already running transport. So why not move your transport to these goods? So if I'm in Zim, why not bring use your, money, your car to bring my stuff to my doorstep? Mm. So... It, it, these very brands we have, if they can connect with someone in transport, we can convert that into the business model. Sure. I want to create that venue. And, and, and let me contribute and say, you made me meet, uh, he's a CEO, that man, of a, an amazing company, Roy Kwangware. Kwangware. That's a sim boy. A sim boy. He introduced <laughs> me to him. He's in, uh, he's in, he's in Whitbank. He started there. introducing me to uh, some big, bo well, not yet, mm -hmm. but he started telling me about his relationships and some people he knows who have been in, the, and he says, you actually even know them better. People who have been in the beverages space forever in Zim. Mm. And a lot of people who are entrepreneurs who are young, yeah, I want to help you take more fat. And, and I understand, but I always say, do you understand what is at hand? Do you understand logistics? Do you yeah. understand warehousing? Do you understand manufacturing? Do you understand the marketing part of it, even when it gets outside? Do, yeah. you, do you already have clients? What are you distributing into the market already? Mm. Is it in the M FMCG space? Mm. Do you un so I'm, like, I all, I'm always encouraging guys, link us up to people who are already doing already that. It does not have to be beverages sure. or other things. But anyway, mm. for some reason, coincidentally, I always say good, what we're doing is spiritual. Mm. You know, even earlier on, this entire place was booked. We're not supposed to shoot here. Yeah. Uh, but I always say, like, you know, you can turn something in it has been into something amazing. Yes. There was just this little corner here. Mm. We wanted to shoot outside today because it's spring day. Mm. Over there by the blooming, beautiful pink flowers. By the flowers. Maybe one of the cameras, when you're done, cutaways of how the beautiful flowers are blooming. Mm. It's the first of September. Yeah, but they're blooming already, man. But hey. blooming. <laughs> we took a corner and we turned it into this. Yes. Right? And that's what we're all doing as black people. So mm. it's so amazing that the gentleman you introduced me to mm. is now are willing to introduce us to people who might take more fire to even greater heights in Zimbabwe, right? Oh. Oh. And you are sitting here and earlier on I was speaking about land and you're like, no, not even land. And he's like, even mining. Yes. We can con co have a conversation. Yes. My business partner in Mofaya with his other partners, they're into mining. Mm. Guys, let's lease things. It's our time. Let's it is our do time. them now. I'm wearing Kisua Africa. Hey, I, 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 give me a contact. This though. is Kisua Africa. Give me contact, mm. my brother. There is low end all the way up to luxurious mm. African brands. Mm. You've got your Macrosses that are playing in, in their yes. Yes. You've got your Tepo jeans that are I playing I got a in pair of space. socks. My wife bought me a pair of socks. Skinny that, 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 socks. That's that, what that, no, no, they, 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 yeah. they are Macrosses. Oh, they are Macrosses. Ma I also I, have their Macrosses. I could only yeah. afford one sock. <laughs> <laughs> but what's, ni what, what's nice but is... They're nice. They're nice. But what's nice yeah. is we've got a market of you mm. who are our leaders mm. wearing Louis Vuittons, wearing Gucci's. It's okay, we're saying there's nothing wrong with you guys playing in that space. But play in that space with African brands. No, but, but, we now have them. I made a promise. Right? I made a promise. As far as brands are concerned, never. Never. Over my dead body. Cheese. Never. I think I had more than... I had more than... I had more than... I had more than... I had more Guys, we're in a struggle. We said last week, none of us is a winner. None of, no matter how much you can be successful, Peño. Yeah. 
None of us is winning. Until, I, lo- I love the fact you spoke are. about the corner. Uh, when we had him previously here, Professor JJ Tabani spoke about how you need to brighten the corner where you are. You know, and it's a song that uh, a lady that I know well, Nozu Mapoma, who's written a song about it, Brighten the Corner Where You Are. So I'm, I'm very appreciative that we've lit this up. People have helped us with the color schemes. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> so I'm, I'm quite inspired. And I'm looking forward to joining this. Humans of New York is a plug that people can check out where normal people's stories have been documented on the internet. Positive stories, some sad stories. I'm hoping that before and after is going to be something like that. Yeah of us documenting our stories. And we've spoken about this before, that with our phones, there's no reason why you have to wait for news cameras. You, wherever you are in a car, a story breaks, a fire, mm-hmm. go with your phone, pretend you're a presenter, pretend, of course. All of a sudden on Twitter, on YouTube, you're the guy that people go to Ekaslak or for stories. For stories, yeah. All of a sudden you're getting hired by some of these big companies or some of your news are going international because you were the first person on the scene. And I think- So we have to do that. <clears throat> It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Facebook and YouTube space. But all we, all we are going to do is to run a small little program prior. But it will be like a 10, 15 minute how to capture a good story. Yeah. Your camera must be horizontal. First thing, give me your, give me your phone there. First things first, when you are going to be taking a storyline, maybe we may just do it now. When you are going to be using your camera to capture any story, don't take it at... Uh, a portrait. Now, TVT, I'm Please. Sure. All the all the okay. pictures you send on in the, on, on on social media. No, also the, YouTube supports this. Type they must of be yes, like this. Okay. What, 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 we're going to use them on multiple platforms. Filming. Okay. So if it goes on YouTube and you put it like this, then there's those black yeah, things. It, it cuts. The, it cuts on the side. The side. So yeah. the first rule is that always use your camera landscape. on uh, on landscape. And second rule, make sure that the space on the top and the space on the bottom and sides, it's always clear. Don't cut people and chop people off, mm. stuff like that. And don't leave too much space on the top. But it's more or less photography kind of skills. Where when you are putting a picture in, leave enough space, leg room, leave, and keep your focus on your subject. Mm. What is exactly that you want to capture so that you, you, it does not become zigzag. And try and be steady yes. while you are taking your, your picture. If you are even better, put your headphones set on so that your, your, your sound can be coming, your, your, comment, your commentary can be coming from your mouthpiece mm. into your phone, which will record a clearer sound, rather than recording the sound from here. The surrounding sound is also captured with it. So mm. when you are doing that, try and keep your set of headphones on and do your commentary on what you are seeing from your mouthpiece so that the sound is much clearer. Keep your focus on the thing. Keep it landscape. And last commentary, never turn your back away from the sun. Mm. Avoid taking pictures Away and the, the sun, sun is into your camera. So don't be against the sun. Ne- that is the biggest flash you have in the world. For what it is worth, always make sure that you use the sun as your flash. Yes, that's so your lighting. Try by all means to keep your back away from the... No, no, no. So your back must your be back. to the sun. sun. Yeah. Your, your, sun your, best, mu- your back must be to the sun. Your sun must be on your back. On your back, yeah. And your camera can go this way. First few rules of how to shoot a good, a good picture. And while you're shooting... Before you click the shoot button, walk around and always see where the best shade is. Boom. So that you can now see where there's more light, more reflection, and get to capture a good picture. And remember, when you capture a good picture, you never know. Your picture might actually be worth a few more millions mm. in a few years later when you are the one who captured it at the right angle. Do you, under- do you understand why I sell in the streets and why I do my videos? Please tell us. So I'm, no, that's what I mean. Like, I'm happy that he's going towards building some media platform in Zim. Yes. And he's already communicating to the audience out there. To the... To the... When I talk about hustlers in the streets, man, I get emotional. Because that's me, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm just those guys. Sister, sister, so I'm going to be there. 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 I'm going to be I'm those guys that are selling there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Those guys, that's what he's speaking to. Yeah. Because he's developing a business model. And he's speaking to the masses of people in the streets. Ordinary people. Mm. And he's just giving them just simple lessons. And that's what I do. Simple yeah. lessons. Smile. Mm. Greet the person with a smile, be friendly to them, be humble, take the product, put it into their hand. Let them feel it. Let them feel it. Let them feel the product. Yes. Yes. A cold can is a sold can. Mm. 
And you know what I do? Knock spray and then, yeah, you are going to spray with the Come on, come on. And, and imagine, <laughs> Im, imagine after, after a few shows that I'm yeah. going to be running, when I begin to do collect videos on how to, mm. I want to do a, a how to show where wherever you are around Africa, take a video showing us how to. Mm. So whether it is preparing a teach food, us, teach whether us. it is preparing furniture, whether it is artwork, whether it is, but just capture capture the how-to mm. and see the amount of information of Africans sh sharing how to. I love about how to. It's simple education, how to make, bro. How to make materials. I don't, have like to go, I don't have to go for six years in university to sure. learn this, bro. Yeah, sure. I can learn this in just one video and I can go and apply it, right? No. And that's what I'm trying to say to the people out there that the most sophisticated information that we can speak about or politicians can speak about, it boils all the way down to what Penuel said, not on last week's episode, on the weeks before's episode, when he says, brighten your own corner, <coughs> like what he was just saying now. Yes, we complain about the national issues. Mm. We complain about provincial issues. But mm. which municipality rules your area or runs your area? Who are the councillors there? What difference are you making in your own little corner? How does your in home your look? Community? Jordan it... Peterson says, you make your bed. Not like a morning. meme, I'm saying. This one, get, this, one gets me, this one gets me mad, Panuel. Yes. Every time I put a poster up, of course, I'm in a polluted political environment in Zimbabwe. Yes. Where you put anything up, it's about ZANPF. Of course. ZANPF. <laughs> and I'm saying, guys, are you telling me that even wiping your backside ZANPF must be <laughs> it, has, it has gone so bad that anything that you post, ZANU is to blame. Yes. Like you cannot even brush your teeth. There was a storm today. It must be ZANU PF. Yeah, you must blame ZANPF. Some more water for some, some, We're going. Some, We're not stopping. Some, until, until the some bishop, certain things. Until the bishop Some certain back. things you don't wait for ZANU PF. Some certain things are basic things that you can do for yeah. yourself. Part wake of the, part wake of the up work. in the morning and clean up your yard. Part of the work that I'm doing is to try and get people to rely less on government. It's, it's bad for politics, it's bad for business, but it's, it's what's best for Africa and Africans and the world at large. Mm. You can't rely on politicians forever because that is not dignified. And that's not who we ever were as people. Mm. Small, basic things. There's a hole in the street in your yard. Come together with your community and resolve that. There are certain issues somewhere. It can't be that the schooling system, religion, it can't be that politicians have stolen your brain to a point where you have become a vegetable and you can't solve basic, basic, basic problems. I mean, when you look at Kagame, I also experienced the same when I was in Nigeria, where the, is it the first day of every month or last, last day of every month where you're not supposed to get out of the house before 10 o'clock? What is the cleanest day? You just, just get in front of your house mm. and clean your house. And Kagame has created the cleanest city in Africa. Mm. On the basis of just in front of your house, in front of your office, pick up the piece of paper. Kigali. Plant, yes, this? plant, Kigali. plant a tree. Plant some flowers. And here we plant are. Plant a tree is one of my passions. And plant a fruit living tree. in Johannesburg and other cities where we are actually the littering community. Mm. And we expect the government to say, oh, but it's my But we have a question my pep. But it was you. You get to Johannesburg in the night, in couple past six in the yeah. evening. And you drive through. Yes. And you see the amount of litter that is. Yes. And you look at it and say, but how about we teach the people who are throwing this rubbish? There's a dustbin next to you. Yes. And so cleanliness for me is not a government agenda. It's really not. There's some Litt things. Littering. I There's get angry things. when people open it takes and throw a can of more fire out the window. <laughs> yeah. This thing is not biodegradable. Yeah. You no. use your lot. Rather keep it fit when. Yeah, the, basic, this, this, basic this, this is an logic. emblem. It's worth keeping. It's worth keeping. And then you find other guys, mind dear, who take these more fire cans because it's a good material there. Yes. They take these cans, melt them, and, and make recycle. pots, make, make dishes, those nice dishes, and they make uh, you know canisters. They also make flower pots and stuff. So there's a, there's another business that we need to build. When, when someone has had the juice and they're throwing away the can. There's another business recycle, starts. Recycle, another business that starts. Yes. <laughs> that is branded Mofai. Going that, going yes. that direction. And there's a shortage of aluminium. Yeah. And, and in Nigeria also, there's another guy I saw who takes uh, plastics, mm. this bottle of water, bottle, bottle, bottle plastics, mix them with, with the sand, mm. and he makes paving. Wow. Mm. Makes paving. Yes. You can Google it. It's, it's on the internet. Mm. This, this is the how-to program, yes. where to get exciting, where you find people who are actually looking at the amount of rubbish that gathers around them. 
and someone is saying, here's a business opportunity. Like this morning, I did something weird. You know that flower thing on my, you know, when you enter my house? Yes. I destroyed it. I removed all the flowers. I planted some spinach. You've so, been doing that, though, for the past couple I, of I weeks. Vandalized I saw. It, vandalized it. You've taken out these plants that do nothing and, you, and you're planting food. Transformed. The, the, and medicine. Yes. Plant food I mean, and medicine. I'm, I'm paying a bill for water for pay, pouring on grass. I told my wife, hell no. You like it or you don't, go jump. Yes. We can't be uber eating the whole whatever. Slam bile. Slam bile. Before and after. No, Zim, guys, we can before talk and after Africa. Yeah, we can talk until the cows come home. But I think what we are, what we are saying is the revolution is which is on uh, the hustler's corner here mm. must translate itself virtual mkuku in the virtual mkuku must translate itself into the virtual mkuku in the university mm. virtual mkuku into the pharmaceuticals mm. virtual mkuku into the manufacturing that's where we are missing it also where we're missing it i mean i see you are doing this more fire stuff that you are doing brilliant idea but we need to see the value chain by the time we have this this can in our hand how many processes are behind this can mm. and at what level is the african stopping and the european is coming in and the chinaman is coming in mm. and after this can uh, how far does more fire life span extend does it only extend to the drinking and the putting down mm. so maybe in the next brand that you're going to be doing beautiful brand as it is we need to be having a small little corner. Yeah, even did, the did you know, the man, man, did, did you know? Did you know? Hey, we were not even worried about the, fly, the, the sweet. Yeah. We were worried about yeah, education. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe as we go forward, we may have a did you know? Yeah. Like small little business suggestions. But you know what I like? Yeah. You've already given our hustlers and squatters some great ideas. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you already said when the, when the Mofi can gets thrown away. Black, grab it. Already, because there's a video that I posted, uh, Penuel, when I was selling Mofire. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I said to convince the customer to buy it, I was being persuasive. Yes. I was not going to let that customer go. I was going in. Sure. Uh, I, I convinced them to buy, uh, I think, more than one by saying, you can even, this thing's going to be worth a lot in the future. Yeah. You can take it to your Sangaigu room divider. That's exactly what he's sure. saying. Somebody else can create that business and say, okay, cool. As soon as these Mofire cans have been drunk, Mm -hmm. I'm going to put out social media posts and I'm going to market and say, if you deliver a Mofire can after you've drunk it at such and such place, oh, I'll, give you, I'll give you 50 cents sure. per, per empty can. Sure. Bring me the can. Or I'll give you 20 cents per empty sure. can or one rand per empty can. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, now he takes them and he does whatever. And mm -hmm. then he turns it into an incredible business. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Now that's another layer. Another it's either, it's, we can either do that mm -hmm. or partner with somebody who brings that great idea sure. to us. Brilliant. Guys, it's just so many things that we can do. Let's stop in our minds thinking just up to here. Mm. Let's stop limiting ourselves and thinking in the, inside the box. Mm. We are just, we're more greater. That's why I sell in the streets. Because I've been to Ghana. I know that's what they do. Mm. I've been to Nigeria. That's what they do. Mm. I've been to, and all the way to Ekaslam, it happens in our eyes. Minang kules paz and dotogu mamban ban gu sister. Minang indona ses paz. Bing pa ses paz. Fondak indona ebu trade. Go the wholesalers and cash and carry space. I'm learning from the Muslim community. I'm learning from the informal markets. From that that space, na so shy round the car. See, as Sure. Because in a scam, we want to naga pay se kuden zimbona se ngatu is titi. Sure. And that's where the money is. That's where the economic freedom in our lifetime is. Hundred percent. I would want to conclude with uh, what DJ Sbuya said, and also pick up a bit on what you have already mentioned. There are three types of people. Those that think in the box and they are stuck in the box. Mm. Because the box defines the limitations. And Lord help me, we don't even know who designed that box. But some people are simply locked in the religious, economic, political boxes, academic boxes. And their thinking bounces on the walls of their limitations. Group number two, are those who think outside of the box. Beautiful space. They've jumped out of the box, but unfortunately the box is still the reference mm. of their thinking. In as much as they, are, they want to do an idea, they always ask themselves, what will so-and-so say? What will the box say? Mm. Because the box remains the standard. 
in as much as they're outside of the box, they're still being controlled by the mindset that is inside the box. Group number three, my kind of people, bend the damn box and think. <laughs> bend the box <laughs> and think. Creativity, whether it is art, it is business, forget always about co always complaining about limitations. There is space where there is no reference, where education must happen, where pharmacology must happen, where politics must happen, where medicine must happen, where culture must happen, mm. where boundaries and borders must happen, where the African child must stand. And for the first time, the box and the reference to the box is no longer what defines Panya mm. as a South African, as an African, but defines him as a human being. 100%. A life on earth with the full rights of the space that is obsolete <laughs> of anything that limits me to what I should be, how I should be, where I should be, and how I should be. And I think the African child needs to start understanding the freedom that is found when one African child stands there and who refuses to be identified either as African, Zimbabwean, black or what, and simply says, I'm a human being and have something I can contribute into the space of nothingness. I thank you, gentlemen. Oh. Thank you, sir. Jeez, before we close, uh, I just want to say thank you. I don't know if the camera's still on me, just. i just like to thank um, Maponga J for gracing us, for his endless wisdom. Uh, we're looking forward to coming to visit again in Zim. To all the virtual squatters that jumped on, to all the virtual squatters that jumped on, guys, please don't forget to subscribe so that we can give you more education. Uh, subscribe on my channels. Subscribe on DJ Smooth's channel. Maponga J, Farmers of Thought. Please follow Rosa Maponga J, Farmers of Thought. Mm. We're going to be creating before and after Zim. We're going to be visiting Zimbabwe as he's invited us. We're going there to get into mining. We're going there to get into media. Mm. With Matila Koko, we're going into energy. This is the time for us as Africans. Wow. And by Africans, and this is going to answer DJ Smooth's question, but I'm going to do another conversation with him. There is, there is, when we speak about colonization, we speak about Europeans and we speak about white people. Mm. But in particular, we're speaking about an evil group of people that have come and colonized all of us, not just black people, not just black Africans. There are white children out there. There are Indian children out there. There are colored Chinese children out there who also need the decolonization project because these same systems are oppressing you. You are also being throttled by the same red tape regulations and you are hungry for something organic. Something that is beautiful like this continent of ours, especially in this month, which is African New Year. It is not just for black-skinned people. It is for all of you that live on the African continent to celebrate and enjoy with us and build with us. Subscribe to our channel. Please make sure that you become a member and join. Make sure that you click on the notification bell. And we're going to see you guys on the virtual Nkuku again soon. And don't forget to join us at Inzalo Yelanga, uh, where we'll be celebrating the African New Year on the 23rd of September, the virtual cuckoo. Come, come. We love you guys very come, much. Come, 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 bro. Let him close it. Let him close it. Yeah. I don't want to call it a prayer or whatever it was that we started. Let him close it. Now that we have started and we're coming to an end, may the grace of the land rest upon us all. From ceaseless ages of history not told, may it be resurrected in our souls. May our blood beat up with the rhythms of the past. May our visions be catapulted to the future we expect. May our dreams be filled with dreams of unexpected endings and possibilities. Let the children of this land arise and stand and be counted. Let the rains fall gently on your plants. Let the winds blow softly on your faces. May your tribes increase and all those who hate you be scorched by the sun. Let this tribe increase and grow to its full potential. And may all those within the reach of our voices be able to find a new beginning and let the grace of our ancestors turn with joy and expectation as the young generation of the future is rising to achieve the objectives of which we have created years for. Dismiss us now with a blessing and until we meet again, may the spirit of this land rest and reside above and within us all. Shalom. Happy Africa, New Year! Africa, Happy Africa. Happy New Year. Boop, 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 bo